Good morning. Good morning. Budget and I'll start weekend on the budget and what's the last one? Okay. Are your headphones working? Censuses. The census is yeah. a simple yeah. questionnaire that counts everyone living at your address on April 1st. It guides how billions in funding gets used for roads, clinics, schools, and fire stations. It determines the number of seats Illinois has in the U.S. House of Representatives. And your information is safe. It can't be shared with anyone. It's the law. Just look for an invitation in the mail starting March 2020, completed online by phone or by mail. I'm Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. And in Cook County, we all count. Be counted by participating in the 2020 census. Have you ever 
ever wanted to purchase a piece of property, but the process seemed too hard? Or maybe you have dreams of becoming a real estate investor, but you have no clue on where to start. Have you always had an interest in real estate and wanted to learn more? Or perhaps building generational wealth is your goal and you're ready to get started. If that sounds like you, then we have the solution. Hi, I'm entrepreneur and real estate investor Curtis R. Monday. And I'm entrepreneur and real estate investor EJ Williams. And we're the hosts of She Flips, He Flips. She Flips, He Flips is a weekly radio show that will help you develop a transactional blueprint towards real estate investing while teaching you how to build generational wealth. We'll discuss important topics and interview guests with the mission to flip the financial landscape in our communities by using real estate. I'm Curtis R. Monday. And I'm EJ Williams. Be sure to listen to She Flips, He Flips every Saturday morning from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on WVON. Yes, she did. Minutes both ways. Eisenhower Route 390 to the old post office, 28 minutes both directions. Kennedy, 20 minutes for you both directions and Lakeshore Drive, no problems. Mostly sunny and cold today with highs in the teens. Tonight down to 12 degrees. It's currently 2 degrees. That's a look at traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson at 610 on 1690 AM WVON. The views expressed on our programs are not necessarily those of WVON, Midway Broadcasting Corporation, or our participating sponsors. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON, we're your original social media. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on The Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine.
자 Wake up, Chicago! Wake up, world! This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Oh, you know, I'm feeling great, Mays, even though Brother Batad said you said I was the mo. Uh, I didn't say you were the mo. I did not say you were the mo. Wait a minute, Todd, wait. So what are you talking about? Were you watching yesterday the uh, Illinois Minotti podcast? Is that what happened, or were you just uh, lurking? I saw a part of it, and then I got an alert. Brother Batai said, is he saying Todd's the most? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what, Todd. Uh, I believe that the Illinois Minotti was in full effect last night. Uh, first of all, if in case you don't know what is going on, let me start here. Let me back up. Let me say what's up to the WVON Morning Show listening audience. I am the host of the WVON Morning Show, Maze Jackson. Got to say what's up to the rest of the team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom? Jennifer, how are you feeling this morning? Ah, you're excited. I'm blessed and excited. Does it, What does it have to do with? Oh, well, I'm going to tell you what. We are happy for you. You know what? As compared to the city uh, of hate, we are very happy for you and excited that things are going well. So let me, congr- let me be the first to congratulate you on the good things that are happening and wish you all the best as more come down. Let them blessings, what they say, as the prayers go up, the blessings come down. There it is. All right, that is our very own Jennifer Thompson. Now, you know I got to say what's up to the musical conductor, the soul plane, Miss Sonia Escobar. Sonia, how you feeling this morning? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. You know what? Yeah. Uh, let me put on my sexy, sexy morning show voice. Let me say... Happy Valentine's Day to all the lovers out there, to all the lovers. Lovers, lovers, lovers. I know you're used to the morning show with some bang, pop, zoom, but you know what? Let's get this thing off. So if you're listening and laying in the bed, maybe you roll over. Give that special someone a kiss. Maybe a kiss will lead to a hug. And a hug might lead to a... Let me stop. Let me start right there. I'm fanning away. And let me do this. Let me get the soul plane up to 50,000 feet in the air. This is the WVON Morning Show on a happy Valentine's Day broadcast. Uh, Thank you, Sonya, because even though I have it written down on my um, rundown, yes, I wrote it down in red uh, because, you know, I do not like, I don't like Sweetest Day and I don't like Valentine's Day. Sweetest day is definitely just to make you feel guilty. So, and, 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 then, and then here's the bad part with that. The bad part with that is, Todd, is that Sweetest Day is for men, right? Because Hallmark figured they got the you men. men to spend money? Well, see, that's the thing. Women have forgotten that. It's what, it, what happens is these holidays have original meanings and then they move on. So now it's like if you don't think about this. We just got past Christmas. I'm just now finishing paying for Christmas gifts and now I got to go buy a Valentine's Day gift. Yeah, right. Well, actually, I already have it picked out. I just got to go to the store and pick it up. But I got to take a nap before I do that. So I hope I don't get in trouble. Because, man, you know what? I stayed out last night. I mean, I was out. Not only did I do the Illinois Minotti podcast, but I actually went to go see Ghostface Killer and Raekwon. What Raekwon didn't show, or at least he didn't show by my curfew. But, yeah, I was over checking that out. NBA All-Star Weekend is in full effect in Chicago. Last night at the Soul House, it was kind of crazy, man. And how about this, though? How about Jesse Jackson? Jesse Jackson, man, he like All-Star Weekend in Chicago. Dog, they turned out the, they turned out Soldier Field. How you going, this is how big and bad you know Reverend Jackson is. <coughs> you know Reverend Jackson is bad when they have All-Star Weekend and he say, give me Soldier Field. What did they do? At, man, they had see. You know what, Todd? I was. I'm just thinking about this too. This is this is one thing. First of all, let me say shout out to Sharon Troop, because Sharon Troop had Carrie and I on the list. But I, after doing the, she reached out. But Todd, you know, I was thinking, man, I've been noticing we don't get invites to like the VIP stuff. 
I always be coming somewhere and seeing people leaving the VIP stuff, but then when somebody in trouble, you know what the first thing they want to do? Oh, yeah, they want to get on the show. Call on the morning out. show. Could yeah. you help me with... You know what? I told you, next year, I am going to be the black Darth Vader. Yeah. I'm going to be... That was supposed to be a lightsaber. Yeah, this is much better. See, I know how to do these things. You know, I used to. You know what? I used to want to be uh, Michael Winslow at one point. Remember him from uh, from Police Academy? He was the sound effects oh, guy. Oh yeah, yeah. And he used to do all this stuff. This is a helicopter. I see you've been practicing pretty good. All right, y'all. Yeah. Well, ooh, see that's why you gotta have your own mic cover. Now, see, if I didn't have my own mic cover. Somebody would be inhaling all of that saliva as I was practicing my. Uh, you know what? It's probably going to be a lot of saliva inhaling today. Because it is Valentine's Day, swapping kisses. Do you French kiss or do you just kiss on the lips? You know what? I'm already in the yeah, Valentine's mode. Really going all around, <laughs> let's take it all. Let's do this. Let's get uh, back to uh, traffic and weather. We'll be back. Okay, y'all. I'm a little off my square today because I stay out. Late, and I'll say late. I mean late. All right, y'all. Give me a second. I'm trying to get y'all. Trying to get back to normal. Talk, talk to the people, man. They need you. Okay. Mm. Uh, shame, shame. I remember, I remember when Cal Marine put in that I was working for uh, for uh, Howard Brookins, and it's like he should probably make this much a year. And then my wife, uh, she probably shouldn't have said that, but ran into Secretary White, and he was like, "Yeah, they're still beating up on our boy, huh?" I guess that's what's happening to Eddie Johnson. Man, I'm so mad at her for that. That was ridiculous. Right here, let me give you a kick in the coronas. What's that, coronas? Let me give you a kick on the way out the door. Yeah. All right, y'all. Let me give y'all a little commercial. I'm gonna be up by my room in my new room. Time would I make you feel your best? 
I go out of my way to make sure you have everything, girl. I don't to be the one who will always be there to give you whatever you want. Girl, you know I can provide whatever you need, whatever you need, babe. Whatever. You are tuned into the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Taj Stroger. Todd, it is All-Star Weekend, NBA All-Star Weekend. The stars and the celebrities are all touching down. It is, I mean, I'm telling you, it is the center of the universe right now, and there are NBA events going on all over the place. All over the place. But I'm going to tell you what, tonight, today at uh, 8 o'clock, we're going to talk to you about all the things you can do to participate in All-Star Weekend, even... If you don't have four thousand dollars for tickets, <laughs> hey man, them tickets ain't no joke, bro. No, ain't no joke. Those bro. tickets are not a joke. I was looking for some tickets yesterday online. Man, you know what they was trying to charge a brother five thousand dollars to sit in the two hundred level. You know how long it's been since I've been in the two hundred level. I was like, do you got something in three hundred level? <laughs> 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 I, you know what though? I'm gonna tell you what. I'm nervous. I think if I bought tickets in the three hundred level, my son would be like, Dad, can we watch it on um? Could we watch it on TV? Yeah, it'd be like, no, that's okay. <laughs> you know what? Some man, you know what? But I'm gonna tell you what. Also, not only is it an op, there are there opportunities today um, for for what? Not only are we gonna talk about ways for you to participate uh, in NBA All Star Weekend on the cheap, but we are the NBA All Star has come to WVON, and we are gonna be giving away tickets to the NBA All Star 2020 crossover. Uh, at Navy Pier, we're going to be giving away a pair an hour. A pair an hour. So I am excited. You all be ready. Have your phones ready to dial. You know, write this number down now. 312-374-8130. Write it down now. 312-374-8130. And you never know when I will drop the tickets. Right? You want to take your kids to see all of the NBA stars? I'm trying to get my son to meet Muggsy Bogues. Because Muggsy Bogues is like five foot three. But he used to ball. No, oh, yeah. man, that dude them passes, and so you know, I wanna. I, I'm looking forward to it. Check this out, though. How crazy is this? I told my. Th let me tell you what. This is how kids are. I told my son. I, you know, I was thinking that I was gonna snatch him out of school today and sneak him to a couple of NBA events that I had some um, great uh, tickets to. I right? think that is worthy. I would. You know, he was like, he was like, uh, Dad, today is the Leo game. Um, I. Oh, he has to be there. He <laughs> yeah. <play. laughs> now, now they play tomorrow, but he is like, uh, I definitely need tickets to the game. I definitely need tickets to the game, Alonzo. Uh, I am. Uh, but he he was like, Dad. Uh, yeah, I know the All Star Game is here, and I know you have done everything. You know that long conversation we had. But he was like, the Leo game is tonight, and I got to be at that. So he is like, uh, I was like, My okay. I, but you know what? I'm not mad at that. And then tomorrow. Uh, so how about this? De La Salle, pl uh, listen to me. Oh, my God. That's the old tuition checks. St. <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> Rita plays Leo today. That ought to be a good rivalry, too. The two real black Catholic schools in the Catholic League. Mm -hmm. I look forward to it. You know, it's funny because when you go to Leo games, you see all the old white guys who went to Leo back in the day. Right. But I'm going to tell you what, they really support that school. They do a big, they do a lot for uh, Principal Shaka Rawls over my there. My eighth grade uh, teacher... Bill Siegel. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to Leo, and he's very, yeah, very active. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you what. It's All-Star Weekend. You all get ready. Tickets uh, are available. I mean, let me say, we're going to be giving away crossover, NBA crossover tickets, so be ready. I told you I went out last night. You know what it was? Oh, man, I was feeling good. I, it, it's, it felt really good. Well, let me back up. At 8, at 10 o'clock, I was like, man, it ain't no way I'm going nowhere. But I had promised Carrie, so we decided we were going to go. We went, and we went to the Soho house, and we saw, like, it was like, that man, we got there, and it was like, you could tell, like, something was different. Like, everybody's doing something. So first I saw, uh, I think, uh, Vi Viola uh, Cannabis Company had an event there. Mm. So they had an event. I think they had an investor's meeting. Uh, shout out to Sharif. Uh, I, I was like, there's no way I'm going to make that. But... When I was going upstairs, then I was chilling out. And the thing I like about Soho is you can't—they can't take pictures. Man, 
and then I saw Scottie Pippen. And it was like, man, it was almost like the old days. It was the bottles, it was the champagne, it was everything. And I was like, man, it's going to be a good weekend. It's going to be a <laughs> lot of people here. Um, but, I, you know, I did the Illinois Minotti podcast last night too, Todd. Yes. Um, and can I just tell you that I think that there probably won't be a more informative political show um, anywhere in the world than the Illinois Minotti podcast. Yesterday after I did the show... Uh, there were people who were intimately involved in the situation. They were like, I watched every minute of it, and you were spot on. Oh, my God. And it just made me say, see, man, I told you. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling. I can see the future, and it will be. You know what? I'm telling y'all the future right now. And we're going to be talking about the future past. And you're going to be like, Mace told me. And then we're going to be like, and you could tell him. Mace. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how about this one? Uh, did you see that uh, the white folks, the epitome of white people problems, uh, in an effort to uh, assuage their new, the citizens of the north side who need to watch European soccer with their brunch, yeah. uh, city council is proposing a new law, that a new ordinance that would allow alcohol sales to begin at 9 a.m. as compared to 10 because of the year, according to Alderman Michelle Smith, is it Ms. Smith? Michelle Smith? Smith, yeah. Yes, according to Alderman Michelle Smith, she has a lot of constituents who like to go to brunch and watch European soccer, and they need drinks to go with it. Of course. White people problems. <laughs> um, did you see, uh, Who? I'm wondering who Mayor Lightfoot is going to choose as the chief of police. They're saying it's come down to uh, four people, but really two, one being Sean Malinowski and the other one being David Brown. I guess... And I think Malinowski tells you one is white, and David Brown, I guess you can guess, is black, brown, but he's black. I'm going to go with that. Okay, well, he is. Um, and they're saying that it's going to come down to community. This is what they brought it down to. If the mayor is going to choose someone who is a com who's community based and uses his personal story, that's the black guy. No, I, I uh, never know, man. Or the, or the technologically advanced. Um, person who was the deputy chief, who was the chief of staff to Charlie Beck, who has brought all types of technology to policing. You see how they fix it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they gave the brother, they gave the brother a page too. Look, it's Talk Chicago 1690. When we come back, Todd, I'm going to ask the social media question of the day. Yesterday, when uh, we were leaving the Soho house, we got um, we got into a cab or to an Uber, and it was an Asian Uber driver. And I felt some. I've had an Asian Uber or a Lyft driver. One of those two. He, he coughed. <laughs> You're laughing. Uh, I wasn't. Yeah. So when we come back, I want to know: Are Chinese people being discriminated against uh, because of the coronavirus? Uh, they had a press conference yesterday too. We'll talk about it all when we come back. Stop, Chicago. Poor man. He didn't even know if he was Chinese. <laughs> oh, he was I hope ain't nobody sent me no coronavirus in the mail. Oh, I remember. You get envelopes and they be dusting them. And, oh man, the secretaries be afraid to open them. Crazy stuff. Crazy pants. Crazy didn't start yesterday. Wow, look at this, y'all. I just opened up an envelope from a fan from Charlotte, North Carolina, who listens to us every day and sent me a check. Do y'all see this? I'm not going to show her name. Oh, 
from Charlotte. Aww. Aww. Well, goodness gracious, that was so nice. In the action pack day already. Now what you know what I love is when he's when somebody bring you this and it's full of money. This is what gets people in trouble if you're a government politician. But if you are a businessman, you love these. This used to be like one of my favorite things. Like somebody be like, it's, you know, it's like a check is nice. But boy, 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 can I y'all tell I am hurting this morning? Hurting. Talk to some. MC and my people call me milk. so in man like I hope the Russians don't compromise the voting machines did you all watch Illinois Minotti last night I watched for like seven minutes oh. you're a hater you are like, Todd, I, 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 Todd is the Todd I is like it on and I'm a hater. Did you watch the whole thing, Todd? No, I didn't watch the whole thing. Todd, the, is he Todd, a hater? The mm -hmm. feed was a little uh, iffy too. The feed was man. I felt no. I, we fixed that. It was like first of all, the first part of it was so we recorded so the mic wasn't connected to the. It's connect. It wasn't connected to this audio. So then, if you listen later when we added the mic, it's good. But I think that's Maze's way, just trying to get more hits. Yeah, if you couldn't hear it the first time, you got to go back and fix that. <laughs> no, we. You know, we did though. We did not reveal the mole. He said, if you want to get the mole, you got to get the podcast. You got to listen to it. But I did flash Man. a picture of the mole today. -mole. <laughs> I did flash a picture. Uh, I'm hearing that today, uh, if. If the feds have a sense of humor, today will be va the Valentine's Day Massacre. <laughs> um, yeah. You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1698. I'm, I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. Uh, I'm going to talk about something real quick. But, Sonia uh, and Todd, what I want you all to do is see if you can find Dr. Uh, Arwadi yesterday from the press conference talking about uh, Chinatown. Uh, but, Todd, uh, we're going to come back to that in a hot second. Um, but remember, everybody, tune in because we are going to be giving a pair of tickets away every hour 
to in the NBA crossover. Look, and then you know, don't uh, forget at eight o'clock we're going to talk about all the things you can do uh, to participate in NBA weekend, even if you don't get tickets to the game. Yeah, Todd, I was telling you, man, I was uh, as it relates to NBA and and like sporting events. This may sound super vain, but I do not like going to live sporting events unless unless mm -hmm. I have like a seat that allows me to walk down a bunch of steps and people could say, who is that? His seats must be good, right? <laughs> but beyond that, I'd be like, man, because like when it's football, right? You don't got the little yellow line. You don't got all the, all the good stuff. When it's basketball, it's like, man, if you ain't like in the lower bowl, it's like, you know, like you sit in the club, you just go into the club to eat some food and, you know, talk to the people next to you. Well, but, it depends on, on where well, you are. You're right. I mean, it's, see, site wise. But you, I actually you like you club end level. up doing a lot of social talking. I do like club level because then that's when they bring you the uh, the waiter comes. And they're like, hi. That, the waiter comes there and the waiter comes to the um, floor seats. You mean uh, a dessert uh, cart? No, 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 no. That's, that's yeah. when you're in the boxes. Oh, oh, oh. No, but when you're in club seating, is that, not in the boxes. Is box. that 200? Yeah, that's the 200. Oh, yeah. Like I've the, only been to that level once because people drink and stuff there, so I wasn't that interested. Man, the 200 level was actually, actually the 200 level is rocking if you want to get the big mix of social and. Yeah, it's like the bleachers. I don't want to be in that. I feel like sometimes though, like you know, the challenge with this NBA All Star Game is like again, it's like when you count in Chicago, but then the world comes to Chicago. It's like you keep getting pushed up. Every celebrity that comes in pushes like the local people up. Although I do have my NBA All Star Game tickets. You know, my dad's first tickets in a new stadium were in the first row of three hundred. What? Was like, Whoa! What's down there? <laughs> see you. What? See. You know what? I He started in the balcony in the old stadium, which actually you could see from everywhere in the old stadium. Yeah, I mean you could see, but that's and, and this can was, you be seen when they, they built the new stadium, it was supposed to be comparable. But uh Todd, your dad was the president of the county board and the finance chair of the county board. See, this is the difference. He moved after the next I season. bet the heck he did. He moved where? You move down to the hundred. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's you know what? Uh, it's funny because when you go down to the hundred level, you can see like during the Bulls game season, yeah. you can see all of the black people that have money because they got their seats and they all like. I feel yeah. like they all got like they all bought in one row, and it goes <laughs> around the rim. Like, yeah, man, I, I I I wanted to buy Bulls season tickets one time, and then I like D Rose went away and it was like, yeah. Oh, you, it's, it's uh it. There are peaks and valleys. Like when we first got our tickets, uh, or, uh, yeah, it was we were sitting right in the second row behind the basket, and Carmen Electra was in the front row. But I didn't know who Carmen Electra was, but she was going out with Dennis Rodman. Oh, now see, that's and that's. The kids were chasing her down the hall. Carmen, Carmen, when I happened to be going to the bathroom, I was like, I wonder who that is. Come, <laughs> come, 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 come. Uh, no, Carmen Electra. <laughs> yep, remember Prince Day to her too. No, you know, I, you know, I be loving. You know what I love? Like when, like when the white guys be like they got their trophy and they be like, you know, but Prince was there first. <laughs> but like, you know, I'm sorry. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Oh my goodness, that's not a good how uh, Valentine's Day. Nah, uh, probably not. Message. All right, let me stop. Okay, so Todd, uh, did you all find? Did you find it? Uh, you find the clip? Um, so Todd, let me ask. Oh, okay, so you know I went to Sundance when the uh, when the uh, coronavirus fo first broke, and I wore a mask through the airport, and people were making fun of me, but I was like, Oh, people noticed you. You were you mean like you were the only? Uh, or, you no, know, nah, it was me and the Chinese people. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was like me and the Chinese people, yeah. and I was walking through the airport like. <sighs> And all the black and everybody else was walking around like it was all good. Then the Chinese people got off the plane and they all had on masks. And I was like, mm-hmm. And I looked at Carrie and was like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can a billion people be wrong? Right. So I was like, man, I I felt some kind of way. But as this thing is as done, and you know, I did you see that screen where they showed the video and it was like it was like sixty five thousand people were dead from it, not like. And then they hit it and you ain't never seen it again. See, I feel like this coronavirus is like a real deal. And you know where I felt like it would actually be concentrated? You know where? Mm. Right smack dab in Chinatown. I had a feeling. I, right. And then it was Chinese New Year. And so people were coming to celebrate. And they were coming from everywhere. And Todd, I'm going to tell you, I was nervous. 
But I've what been. Is this twelve monkeys? I've been. Well, I don't know what's twelve monkeys. Bruce Willis. I didn't see that. Man. Ah. So anyway, <laughs> then I was like, "But I'm gonna be cool." Then you know, on Saturday, you know, I got my offices right there by the church that um, all the Chinese people come in their Lexuses to get free food. First of all, they they be <laughs> they be coming in they whips. And they be like, they be like, give me. The, I be thinking they taking nah, all that food. On, they taking that food back to the restaurant. I've worked in the in the in the St. James. Some of those people are on the bus, actually. Okay, but the ones with the uh, Lexuses, they be parking in a lot. You know how you know how I know when they there because the parking lot is full. <laughs> I'm serious, and you be like, man, these cars are really nice. And then they be rolling with their cart, and then it's like they be limping up to the cart, and they look around, see everybody straight, then they stand up and. Load up the car and be like, give me them sack of potatoes. Throw that up in there. Anyway. You're probably right, though. I'm, I am. I, Ty, I'm going to do a video one day. Anyway. So, Ty. I, I've been trying to be cool about this. And then I caught an Uber last night. And the Uber driver was Asian. I'm assuming he was Chinese. And I got in the car and the first thing that crossed my mind was... Hmm, I should have brought a mask. <laughs> but oh, I said to myself, self, I'm overreacting. And then, Todd, it happened. <coughs> <coughs> he caught me. Mm. And I looked around. I let the window down. And I was and, and it was like he almost got offended. And I was like... That's probably not true. Bro, what's not true? He probably was offended. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, this is my thing, though. So, that's my point. So, this is my question. Social media question of the day. Are Chinese people being discriminated against because of coronavirus? What's rude versus realistic? Right? Mm. Like, I'm, I'm saying, what's rude versus realistic? Because I'm just telling you, it went through my mind. And it's like, you know how you be like, oh, it never happened to me. <laughs> you know, now check it out. Yesterday, it's gotten so bad that they had to hold a press conference. Like, people are avoiding Chinatown. It, it was so bad that the mayor's office. I'm avoiding Chinatown. And it, see? See? But, man, I don't want to. So, let's hear what speaking they had to say. The Jackson, Wait. Speaking of the Jacksons, Jesse Jackson Jr. gave me the best advice. Protect yourself at all times. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm not hating you, Jason. I'm amazed. Okay, so so yeah, let's hear the press conference. Let's hear a clip from the press conference. Please do not allow stigma, xenophobia, or fear to control your decisions. Chinatown and all of Chicago is open for business. Okay, okay. Is, is it xenophobia to be concerned, concerned about an international, international virus that has originated in China that people, I mean, I'm just saying. That it, virus doesn't look at color. Right, right. Okay. okay. It's, it's not, not a bigot. Big. Okay. okay. But do you increase your propensity by going to Chinatown? Like, is it like playing no, my, my point is, this going to grab anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so they were saying that the business in Chinatown has been down by 50%. Mm -hmm. Like 50%. Um, is it wrong to, to avoid? Like, is that racist? Is that racism? But I'm telling you, straight up. Like, I, I promise you. I'm, I promise you they are hurting for because it's the NBA weekend. And they're like, oh, this is just the wrong time. And then, um, here, think about this. Like, should should people, should international press from China be allowed to come to the uh, All-Star game? Oh, my. See? Oh, my. Why you say oh, my? No, I'm just saying. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh my. <laughs> that this time was for you for even suggesting that they not. <laughs> that they come? No, that they not come. Okay, so wait. Hello, hello, hello. So, I, I'm just saying, I got a press pass. Right. Got a press pass. And I, when I went to go pick up my press pass, there was all the international people. It was French people. It was Jap no, I wasn't Japanese people. It was French. It was English. It was Polish. It was Ukrainian. It was everything. What I did not see in the line was any Asians. Mm -hmm. United has canceled the flights, and they said, to China, to the continent. Wait a minute, so hold on, check this out. They have cut, uh, check this out. United Airlines and a lot of American airlines have cut off 
They're not going. They're not flying to the continent. And you tell me I have, I, I'm xenophobic if I go to China. If I don't want to go to China, tell. You mean the country? Yeah. Oh, the continent of China. <laughs> they oh, the they're not landing on the whole continent. <laughs> Let me make sure I get that right, because I don't want the children to be around here talking about, May said China was a continent. All I know, Asia is a continent. But let me just say, there's no flights going into China and coming back. Mm-hmm. Think about this. Did you see the thing about the people who were at, who went on a the cruise? They had some Asians on the on the, on the, the boat, and they oh, went the left. Uh, the they, le- they made the ship stay in the ocean. Yeah. But y'all telling me I gotta go to China. I'm xenophobic about I don't wanna go to China Town. Let's talk about it all when we come back to South China. With the Bloomberg Urban Report on. So I got to go to Chinatown to prove I'm not a racist. The Southern yeah, Christian Leadership Conference was founded in New Orleans. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. No, really. was SCLC yeah. president at the time. Yeah. Now in its third it's year of law. operations, it's this year's graduating class of LeBron James I Promise School will receive free tuition to the Kingston University in Ohio. DSW thinks Jennifer Lopez can be its Michael Jordan. The actress and singer is partnering with DSW for her own line of footwear and accessories. Lopez will get the shares of the company based so, on sales. So the good thing is, go and the cost so the of living barely budged last month. It was up just one tenth of one. Is you have cable and you got internet. If you're on a if you're on a ship, stuck, you have that already. You're stuck in your room. You can go out on your balcony, but only with a mask on, and food and water gets delivered to your room three times a day, but you have to wear a mask when it comes. That's prison. It, that is prison. And no, because, because, and, and what if you ain't got. You guys weren't on my, my so honeymoon there, cruise. Because you had an inner cabin, you ain't got no. I didn't have none of that. that 2,000, 2,200 passengers, 1,000 crew. Um, they there was supposed to be a two week cruise. It's now coming up on four weeks. I think tomorrow or Saturday, um, and about two hundred and twenty people have been taken off the cruise ship with the virus. So they get tested every like two days. Wow! Can I check? And each time a new test comes up, they got to wait fourteen days. Somebody comes up positive, they got to stay quarantined for fourteen days. That's hell. Oh yeah, we gotta get away tickets. We're gonna do it right now in between these commercials. Wait, right. wait, we got a whole break, right? Oh, I gotta give them away for you. Give them away. Hold on. Nation with your doctor. Brought to you by AppV. This is your man, Maze Jackson. All right, get to your phones, 312-374-8130. 312-374-8130. We are taking the sixth. Caller, the sixth caller, the NBA All Star 2020 cross- crossover is a live event happening at Navy Pier this weekend. It's an interactive atmosphere. There will be live performances, artist visits, and special appearances by Ronnie 2K, Hebrew Brandley, and more. Be the sixth caller right now at 312 374 8130. That's 312 374 8130. The NBA crossover event is sponsored by the NBA and the Chicago Sports Commission. Renowned education leader Jeff Canada for Mike Bloomberg, Democratic candidate for president. When Mike first became me, make Y'all want to see the mall real quick? In three, two, one. Damn. That was quick, huh? One more time. <laughs> Sonya and Ty, y'all got the, um, Okay, the talk to the people. Talk to the people. Hey, Sonia, right where you have your camera? Sonia's got a camera. Right, Sonia, you yeah, I haven't been out much, so I'm not really worried yet about that virus. Of course, I have children. You know how children are. That's all kind of stuff around. Oh, excuse me. Shoot, I'm just worried about 
my regular old doctor visit. You know, I did a stress, it wasn't a stress test, it was a cardio something. Take, take a look at my heart. Just down my heart. Just down my heart. Yeah, yeah. But one could ever make me feel this way. So just gonna be what we're going through. Somehow, some between me and you. Love will stand the test of time and never ever fail. But we're not making love no more. We're not even trying to change. Tell me how sips away. Does it ever stay the same? We don't even talk no more. We run out of words to say. Tell me how you have to change. Does it ever stay the same? Now I know things are going right. But don't you think it deserves a fight? A love like ours won't happen every day. When we're losing it, losing it right now. So, nay, yeah, yeah. When Marie, time was too fast, love was stepped away. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd, hey. check this out. Darius Shaw of the West Side won the ticket. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is Darius still on the line? Is he on the line? Wait a minute. He was listening through the commercial break. That must mean he is a faithful listener. Darius, welcome to the morning show. How are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm outstanding. Thanks for the tickets. Uh, good morning, Maze, Todd, Sonia. I forgot the young lady that does the news, but good That's morning. That's Jennifer Thompson. Hey, well, Darius, I'm going to tell you. All right, now, who are you taking to the, who you taking to the NBA crossover? I'm going to take my son, See, Kevin. That's what I'm talking about, man. I, you know what? I might bump into you because I plan on taking my son. I know my man, VBZ, is taking his son. Ty might even. Uh, you know what, Ty? Hey, Ty. Yes, sir. You should bring Claire, man. <laughs> I was just thinking, man, you should bring Claire and I bring Mazon. And, you know, we can work it all out. Hey, Darius, well, we're going to be looking for you at the NBA crossover, man. You make sure you have fun. What's your son's name? Devin. Devin. All right, shout out to Devin. Devin yeah, Devin's the top piano jazz player in the state. When, Which one? When is he coming on the morning show? Whenever you invite him. Uh, so get tight, get on the morning show, get him, get him on a Friday. Look, Darius, we appreciate you. You talk to my producer, he'll lock you in. We're going to make that happen. It's the WVON Morning Show. Don't forget, we got two more pairs to give away the NBA crossover. Everybody can go to the NBA this weekend. All right, let me go back to my social media question of the day, though, Ty. Ty, yeah. you know, Sonya, play the clip again. Play the clip. Play the clip because this is what the city council this was it. This is what the mayor's office said because. Don't nobody want to go to Chinatown right now. You got it? You ready? Let's go. Please do not allow stigma, xenophobia, or fear to control your decisions. Chinatown and all of Chicago is open for business. Now, now I'm just saying, straight up, I told you, Todd, when I went to the airport to go to Sundance, yeah. 
all everybody was saying, don't be scared, don't be fearful. And I put on my mask and people was making fun of me. And then I'm telling you, right when all the Asians got off the plane from China, they all had on a mask. And I was looking like, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was in an Uber yesterday. My taxi driver was um, looked like he came from Chinatown. He was <coughs> I let the window down. I was nervous. I ain't gonna front. I'm sure you were nervous. Does that make me racist or a, a xenophobe? Mm, I don't think that makes you that. Just a little cautious. If, okay, well, let's go to Michael. Michael, you're on the Talk Chicago 1690. Are we being... Hey, good, morning. Are, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning Michael. Michael. No, you ain't, you're not racist or <laughs> xenophobic, but I ask you, you know, you got to protect your health, so wear your mask. I ask, what, uh, you know, as far as after hearing that clip from the CDPH uh, Health Commissioner, the new one, I asked the question, where is her public concern as it concerns black folks laying under the viaduct mm -hmm. homeless whose health challenges probably have not been dealt with over there on Archer and Stewart in John Daly's ward. I happen to be in a car coming through and seeing this under the viaduct. I know that people talk about this because I've heard Brother Hall and them talk about it, but to see it, I mean, where where is there concern concerning the homeless as it concerns feeding the hungry, clothing the hungry, and more importantly, dealing with their health issues? We, you're more liable to catch the flu in this city than you are the coronavirus. It's only what two people in in as far as the city, as far as what they call Chicago land, not in Chicago proper, but in Chicago land over there in the home in the state when the woman came back and gave it to her husband. So as far as I'm concerned, I wish the city had that type of concern for the homeless who are in the who live on the Vidox. That's my comment for today. All right, so we'll, have a we'll, good one. we thank you, Mike. We'll be back after the traffic news and the weather. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. What up, Aqua? I seen you on now. What's up, Reby Ryan? What up, Dorothea Friend? What up, Dennis Kaiser? What up, Salim Wakil? What up, Levon? What up, Alvin E. Norton, Constance Foster? What up, Shaka Ross? Shaka, we finna ball y'all today. We coming to ball, and tomorrow morning. Freshman B, we balling y'all. We gonna ball y'all out the gym. Tell Big E we coming for y'all. That's right, we coming for Leo. It's the same Rita Mustangs. Did I say that? Go Raiders. <laughs> Go Raiders. What up? Raymond Hubbard, hey y'all. This is me pushing myself through because can I tell you, I literally had an hour and 45 minutes of sleep last night. Not even sleep, right? Now, can have you ever had a twenty minute nap that felt like two hours, and then a a, a, a ten hour man? Let me say it in reverse. Anyway, y'all take a moment share the broadcast. What up, CL Cross? What up? Let's take that social media question of the day. I'm gonna tell you all what. If you really want to understand what's happening, you really, really, really need to watch the Illinois Minotti podcast. Now, it was broken up. I'm gonna tell you. I feel like. There was a concerted effort to break up the podcast. The internet we have at our office is super powerful, strong. I have, like, when I want to have an uninterrupted broadcast, you know where I go? To broadcast from the office. Uh, but also, I hope you all notice that we are building out a full studio very shortly. If you have a show you'd like to, to get produced and you'd like to have distributed, holler at us. Uh, matter of fact, I want everybody to give me their list of all the fun and free stuff or the parties and events that are happening. Don't forget, I'm going to be at Sibs Breakfast Club um, this weekend for the Black Greek Brunch. Don't miss the Black Greek Brunch.
Dang. Sometime scoop. Judy Bartopinka fed the FBI tips for years on possible corruption in the West suburbs. Didn't seem like it did anything. <laughs> I don't remember anybody getting arrested in the West uh, suburbs. Nothing kind of sued or fried dough. Except for uh, Cicero. Todd, we need Todd, to. Um, the Africa American thing. St- st- pull the list together of events. Also, yeah, and also there's a list that was in the paper about like restaurants and places. Today's paper. It, I think it was yesterday's restaurants and places you can go to expect to see if you want to go star gazing and all this. Okay. Stuff. I guess uh, strip clubs and Harvey are out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, actually, they got a pretty. They got and they got a big old. But like a room. Oh, okay. It's a day party. Tony, just let me know. I'm happy to uh, call into the show. Tanil, it's at um, XL Tennis, right? What is bounce? Michael Jordan bowed out bounce all weekend. Where is it? Man, what's crazy is the white boy is buying, buying out all of this stuff and playing in this game. It's like, what's crazy is the white boys are going to make more money off of NBA, off of black NBA parties and All-Star Weekend, the side money, where more white people will benefit from it. Hmm. It's crazy, man. Nah, I'm not surprised. I mean, but again, if, they, if we was throwing the parties that they throwing, they would have cops swarming all over them. So what you're going to have is all of these black celebrities... At white parties, right? And so they get to go and be the black, you know. Man, it's crazy. I'm gonna stop because I'm going. W-V-O-N. Turn off the lights. Move me down some oil, baby. Turn off the lights. Don't. Girl, I want to give you a special treat. This is so sweet. Turn off the lights. Let's get closer. See you on the... You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1690 AM. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You are tuned in 
to WVON 1690 AM. All the lovers out there waking up at the 7 o'clock hour, roll over, look at that special someone, give them a nudge, maybe a little kiss, a hug, turn them off. Yes, turn off the lights. This Valentine's, be a little late to work. Tell the kids to go make a bowl of cereal and send that special Valentine to work with a very special Valentine that is for the lovers. The lovers, this is the WBON morning show late night for the lovers on in the morning. You know what? Some of us like it in the morning. So I'm going to tell you for all those morning lovers out there, this is your time. Don't let us stay asleep. Go ahead, fellas. Say, hey, baby. Hey, baby. What? She, she might get, get away from me, but I'm going to tell you. Then just what you got to do. Play a little Teddy. Bring it back for me, Sonya. <laughs> Same thing. Tell them. Turn them off. Yes. Turn them off. This is the WVON Morning Show Smooth. And it's not smooth, yeah, it's for the lovers. It's the Valentine's Day edition. Todd. Yes, Maze? I don't like how you said that. Say, <laughs> say that to Janine, dog. Hey, it's the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. That was for the lovers on Valentine's Day. Uh, let me say what's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar, who turned the lights off literally in the studio <laughs> you know what what we do if we turned off the lights in the studio no we can't do that because i don't want to be with you in here all right y'all uh but look i, I got a fortress of solitude over here <laughs> hey uh i want to let you all know don't forget this hour and next hour we will be giving away tickets to the NBA crossover. Hey, Todd, uh, I want to remind everybody, check out the replay of Illinois Minotti. And I can't wait until this Sunday because I will be uh, kicking it with Sib's Breakfast Club. Yo, Black Greek Day Pate during All-Star Weekend. See, it's funny because it's like all these people coming in nationally and it's like it's two All-Star Weekends. It's like the All-Star Weekend for the people from out of town. Right. And it's the All-Star Weekend for the people who live in town. And here's the funny part. Like, all the black people who from out of town that's going to be trying to go to the parties that's downtown is going to find out that they got to be local like us, too. Because, look, like, here's the thing. The problem with that is, is, like, the white folks got the money to pay all the big high uh, appearance fees. Right? So, like, if you own all the downtown nightclubs, then what you're going to do is pay... A stupid amount of money, you're gonna pay twenty thousand or ten thousand for the appearances, which then is going to price the black promoters out. Then on top of it, the venues are gonna say, Well, shoot, why do we need to give up the money? Why do we need to have a promoter when we can have the parties ourselves? So what I was what I've been noticing is like the white guys are all the clubs that the white guys are having, they're having all the parties and they're having the talent there, and the black people are trying to find the clubs that the white folks will let them have at the end. And so essentially, and then what's crazy is all of these black superstar NBA players will enrich white people. And, like, they'll be black and they get to be black, but they won't have the same black experience as the rest of the black people. So they'll get to walk through the club and it'll be all good and they'll be like, you welcome here, right? But, like, the regular black people, nah, not much. It's like, uh, reminds me of a story a guy told me about Jamaica where he was in the casino. Jamaica, and they wouldn't Jamaica. Allow the native Jamaicans to come in the, the casinos. Man, it reminds me of France. I went, remember, I don't know if I told you I went to France. I went to Paris during Fashion Week. No, no. Yeah, I was at in Paris during Fashion Week. It was during Lance's campaign. Um, Lance Tyson's campaign. Uh -huh. Once he was asleep, then I was like, you know what, I'm going to Paris. <laughs> so anyway, I was there, and it was like, it was the end of Fashion Week, and the black people had had a black, like a big black fashion show, and they had rented out like one of the top clubs on the Champs de... What's that? How you say that? Champs de Lies? Yes, yeah, Champs de Lies. And it was like, they were like, everybody come to the party. And they had bought out the whole place. And when they arrived, the local black people was like, oh no, we don't allow regular black people in 
<laughs> and so they had spent like tens of thousands of dollars. It just reminds me of like it's black people, black bouncers protecting white clubs and white people making money. And the thing is, the athletes yeah. don't really get any of that, so they don't recognize it. Right, and then once they're in the club, they're like the superstar, and so it's like really crazy. Like I really wish well, that I'm pretty sure they they are above that in their minds. Yeah, I mean, but what what's crazy? What I wish could happen is that like no black uh, NBA player would do a white party without a black promoter. Mm. Right, like if you know you're an NBA player and you're making hundreds of millions of dollars or tens of millions of dollars, man, be like I'm only partnering. You can only do the parties. If I got a local black promoter involved, because the reality is we can't even get to the venue. We're not even welcome a lot of times in the venues that they have. Yeah, right. right? Not at least not in mass. Well, I, I I think it goes. There are not there are not a lot of things that uh, African Americans have true power, but entertainment, athletics is one of them. If you don't use it, then you know we are where we are. Think about this: there's going to be millions of dollars made on the side this weekend, and that will really not go to black people. Right. And it will be made off of black people. Think about like all of the celebrity black rappers that everybody doesn't like is now descending on the city, and like they're at all the white clubs. Could you imagine though? Like, think about this right now. Could you imagine if there was an E2 or a Click or a in or a a black owned nightclub establishment this weekend? Could you just think about this? Could you imagine if there was a black owned nightclub? Like last night I was at Soho, right? I keep talking about this. But I was at Soho and I was thinking, like, these white people are partying. There wasn't no dress code. All the drinks were full. They was kicking it. Like, like if we if they if, if that was black people, they would be like, you need to have a suit, a tie, a blah, blah, blah. And I was just thinking, like, how many people? Todd, I mean, like, how much money could black people have made off of NBA weekend this weekend? And think about this. And I, I just want to put this in the universe. Could you imagine if every All-Star weekend the NBA player said, we're going to make black millionaires this weekend? Mm -hmm. Think about this. If they said, instead of us going to go do white party, white party, white party, white party, we're our give back to the town... Like, they're doing all these charitable events. Like, all the black NBA players are going to all the black places, you know, like to do the jump rope and the inspire the kids and all of that good stuff. Right, right. But could you imagine if after they did that at tonight, they was like, okay, tell me the 10 top black promoters in Chicago. The 10 top black promoters in all of, and they just chop up the things and say, okay, you going to him, you going to him, you going to him. And they say... Because, look, you know people are paying $500 to $1,000 to go to a party this weekend? Yeah, that's real money, bro. Right. And, I mean, people have – think about this. People save up tons and tons and tons of money to spend it just at the All-Star Game. I have a friend that bought a $10,000 package. That's a real package, I guess. And it ain't, though. I mean, it, it, it is, <laughs> but it's like – It's three hundreds. But it's 300s. It's 10000 for three games, but for 300s. So, again – Thanks. What I'm saying is, like, so think about... But let me tell you quickly. Go ahead. At the Democratic National Committee uh, commi uh, Convention, I'm sorry, in Denver, uh, I threw a luncheon, you know. You're right, Maze, if you were on my team, it probably would have been a party. Right. <laughs> Later on. But we threw a luncheon, and we found a, uh, a black-owned restaurant that, you know, we're like, well, let's go there. So we bust everybody to that. And I felt that was, like, our way of giving to... What we could to the black community. I think. I mean, I think that's it, though. Like when we come to town, we got to seek out the black something. Like you, you, you know, like there's the always the guys that came from Chicago or from the local town who gonna partner with the friends that they grew up with. But could you imagine if they was like, when we go to whatever town, we're going to partner with black businesses. What, like, think about how many restaurants people are gonna line up to watch the NBA players. Right. So imagine if the NBA players went to that list of black owned restaurants in Chicago and they all said one day we gonna split up and go to all this stuff yeah, and everybody could take pictures and be in the newspaper, it would be great. It's Talk Chicago 1690, I'm sorry. We'll be back. Yeah, publicity is good. Right, like I'm telling you. So when I went to the All-Star Game in New York City, 
We New were, York City. Yes, I was a guest of Rod Strickland with my with my big bro Donnie Kirksey. This was the year Rod was supposed to make the the All Star team, yeah, but did. because his attitude was bad, oh. he was leading the league in assists. Right. Um, but I remember we stayed at the Regal Royale, and that that was actually the first time that I learned about a boutique hotel, like how epic a hotel room could be that is not something that you like the Marriott or something like that. Right. And you like the Marriott, the the team hotel was right across the street at the Marriott Marquis, and right across the street from that was the Regal Royale. So we're at this hotel, and we go downstairs to eat, and like all the NBA watchers know, so they're all pressed against the window watching us eat because it's like Pat Riley. I'm saying like everybody is in this restaurant. And so it's like everybody you could think of and it was crazy. But I was thinking about like, think about if they go to the restaurants on that list, like Kawhi Leonard was seen picking up chicken wings from blah, blah, blah. Right? Imagine if the Rolls Royces and everything, I mean, you got to secure it, but imagine if all of that stuff started showing up and they went to go eat at Truth Restaurant or they went to breakfast at Peaches. Right. Right? And somebody said, like, on the NBA side, like, yo, we could blow up this town's economy for black people. The white people already got theirs. It's nothing to be like, how many parties are outside of, like, could you imagine an NBA party at the family den? Now, the family didn't need to upgrade, right? Like, right. I do feel like some of the places, part of the reason we don't get people is because once you're used to a certain standard, you ain't trying to go nowhere where you can't go to the bathroom and come, and, like, without somebody pushing the door open. Right. Okay, I'm through. Yeah, you know, Mace, I was thinking about this yesterday. I really needed to, someone like you on the team. You know, you are like some, a cross between Gerald Nichols and Orlando Jones. And both of them are gone. Mm. I needed somebody like that. Yeah, but you, you, I tried to be that, but you know, I, you, you didn't you even return every, my call. every three weeks. I was, so, <laughs> I was so hurt. I was so excited. It was one of the worst times of my life, too. And I remember, like... It was when I was well, still. Was that the worst time for you? It was one because I because I wasn't I didn't have a ton of clients wow. and my business was slow. And the thing is, everybody always assumed that I just had so much, so nobody would do anything. That's why I came to you to get a job. Mm. See now I'm feeling bad. That Maze Jackson. me and you forever will be and I will love you so for always you are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM I'm your host Maze Jackson got my co-host to our stranger hey Earl um call back because I, I I went off on a tangent I'm gonna come back to that we'll save that this conversation for eight o'clock uh, well, we can talk about what's going on and how you can participate in the NBA. Todd, I wanted to, what I really wanted to talk about, but I got squirreled, was uh, I want to know how important is criminal justice reform to black people. 
Like, really. Like, I wonder... You know, I don't know if you've ever heard me say I feel like the, the argument, the criminal justice argument has been hot narrative has been hijacked by the millennials. And when I say that, I wonder is ending the war on drugs, crime, is that really a high priority to black people? And I guess my question is. I think it is. And, and, and I guess the reason I ask is because I would have said yes. How many of y'all remember Khalif Browder? Do you remember the Khalif Browder story? Remember the story of the young man in New York City who was picked up by the police for a, allegedly stealing a backpack that he refused to accept, say that he did, and he wound up being in jail for over, was it over, what's well, like a few years? Like two years. 365 days, over 365 days. Figure out, somebody needs to tell me how long uh, Khalif Browder was in jail. Um... But Todd, the fact that all of these black people are on board with Michael Bloomberg, mm -hmm. knowing his relationship with Stop and Frisk. Yeah, he became the king of Stop and Frisk. I mean, and then hearing the tapes. Hearing the tapes of them saying, now, nah, I'm going to say it is, a lot of, it is some crime in the neighborhoods. Right. But I guess my question is, Todd, how can black people support Michael Bloomberg if criminal justice reform is truly a priority? I mean, like, honestly, here's my thing. If we're mad about Donald Trump and the uh, Central Park Five, that was him talking. We have an actual record of Michael B Bloomberg actually, the actions he took to hurt black folks. It's like an actual record. I mean, it was actually a thing that everybody talked about. Todd, how is it possible? How is it possible? New York City, the same place where, where oh, I can't breathe. Right. Eric Garner. Khalif Browder. Right? How? How? how do you, is, is criminal justice reform really a priority in this presidential election? Do you think... Give us a call, 312-374-8130. What do you think, Ty? I mean, because I really, like, the whole premise of the, the, the complete ignoring of his record on criminal justice, re on, on stop and frisk. I mean, I don't even feel like we've even heard, it, like, a justification. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that we, um... And how does... Americans are talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we... We know that there's there's a need. Uh, it's just permeating society, though. I mean, this, these uh, last elections in the last I don't know six to six years or so, where we've gotten uh, these uh, prosecutors, state attorneys, district attorneys, who are looking to really work the system. Like my dad was trying to to, to work on. Uh, getting uh, more people out of jail when he was the, the president. Uh, we worked on that. Was one of the, the first things that Lance was like, look at this, this guy's been in jail for like, it was something crazy. That's called oh, lost in the, that's called lost in the county. Hey man, everybody, man, one of the biggest, you know, I'm gonna tell you what, one of my biggest fears of ever getting arrested was getting lost in the county. Mm -hmm. I hear stories of people being like, man, you in the county and they forgot you was there. That'd be awful. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it, it's, it's building up where it's becoming a, a national thing. Do you, do you think it is or do you think it's topping off? Because again, if like in the desire to beat Trump... Now, do you mean topping off or do you mean pushback? Well, here's my thing. If they're saying that black people are now saying that Bloomberg... It, we're able to ignore Michael Bloomberg's record on criminal justice reform and the fact that stop and frisk was one of the pillars of the criminal justice reform ending stop and frisk. And, and, and the people who were most disproportionately impacted by it were black people. Yet, here we have, I mean, how much money does it take? And then here's the thing that I would say. How does he have a record of what he, like, the? how does that compare with Trump? Like, because I, I understand people saying anybody could beat Trump. But Todd, if we, if, 
if we know that when he was in power, he implemented actual and actuated policies that wound up incarcerating and doing the exact opposite that we're fighting for. Exact. How important is criminal justice reform? I'm going to tell you that I don't think it's that important. I mean, I think it sounds good. I think it sounds good. But I think that, that what we are seeing right now, Todd, is a is a I almost feel like we're blinded at this point. Like, the desire to beat Trump Oh, oh my goodness. You know what? The desire to beat Trump is nothing compared to today's amazing black fact. Play, uh, Sonia, take, take, give it to Todd. Todd, take it away. Okay, so I guess not for the amazing black fact. You ready? Amazing black fact with Todd Strode. This Black History Month, the WVON Morning Show is proud to present Black, black Facts. Fact, fact. With today's Black Fact, here's WVON Morning Show host, Todd Stroger. So Mace, uh, you know, today I was thinking that, you know, we hear a lot of names, but we don't always know who they are. So I was thinking about Sojourner Truth, who was born Isabella Baumfrey in 1797. Uh, she was a, born in slavery, and at nine she was sold at an auction for $100 along with uh, some sheep. Uh, she was sold two more times. Mm. She escaped from uh, slavery in 1826. She became an uh, evangelist. Uh, she was an abolitionist, a woman's rights activist, an author, which is pretty good for a black woman in the 1800s, isn't it? Uh, she is really known for giving a speech called Ain't I a Woman's Speech, in a women's convention in Ohio in 1851. Uh, she crusaded for the abolition of slavery for the rest of her life, even getting an audience with President Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln ooh, and becoming one of the world's best known human rights crusaders. And that's our Black Pack of today. All right, that is Sojourner Truth, and we'll be back after traffic and the weather. Don't forget, we still got tickets to the NBA crossover. We'll be giving them away this hour. I love that music behind that. It's like... It, it sounds pretty important. Yeah, I feel important. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I never watched Game of Thrones, but I can imagine that kind of music being in the background. Mm. Yeah, me too. Even though I never watched it either. <laughs> Maze? Similar? Here's a power why We got it. Okay. It's up. Man, I'm not reading that. I'm not reading that shit. They got her, they doing Juliana Stratton, but they got a diss of Ken Duncan in this. What? Right. Why would, why would they even mention her?
on me. Open to the public. Let's look at our news now on 1690 AM WVON. I'm Jennifer Thompson. Traffic and weather up next. This news report is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. Fortunately, GEICO makes it easy to bundle your home and auto insurance. Ask Todd, did he call back these people? Did you call did you call the arts basketball life people, Todd? Yeah. What are they coming on or no? I called all the people that you that you gave me and they're all like, okay, well we'll we'll try to get somebody for you. Okay. Man, Todd, I'm gonna do this, but I'm not putting his name in that. I'll put it. The, the state representative, the fifth district state representative. That's like okay. man. That's that's. I, I, I understand. Yeah. I, I you know what I didn't even read it. Yeah. But I know I know. Duh. All right. All right. Like. I get it. Okay. I'll do it on the next break. Pete, pete, pete. <laughs> so, um, are you gonna do the contest soon? Yeah, I'm about to. I'm gonna put it up and I'm gonna tell them. Like right now, because what I have to do is I have to clear the phone lines. Oh, well, let me take these two calls and then I'll... Okay. So, Salim, if black people... Todd, uh, Sean wants to know, did you change your mind on Quinn Buckner yet? Cool. <laughs> Quinn Buckner, are you kidding? A winner like Quinn Buckner? No way, man. You tell me anybody on that list that has more accomplishments than Quinn Buckner. Sean. And Sean lives out there, too. How dare he turn his back on a fellow South Suburban Knight. Damn, this was a long ass break. This is Deacon Dexter Watson. I send all my love, 38 years, to my lovely wife, Jazz Lady Robin. I love you. Wait, so that's much. Dexter Watson. You are the love of my life. That's who Walter B. Happened to me. God bless you. Yeah. Deacon Dexter. De bless De all Deacon. that you are. Sponsored by Seafood. 10754 Southwestern Avenue. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, he talked about Walter like <laughs> <laughs> Night sleep with the lights on every time my phone rings. I would pray to God just you just won't beat me. But I oh, I miss you, I miss you. There's no other way to say it and right. I'm crazy tonight. I miss you. I miss you. Easy to see that I miss you. 
me. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. As uh, One Hit Wonders go, I mean, they didn't have one hit, but I mean, their their album was so great. Mm-hmm. They are in the top ten. Who was there? Uh, uh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Climax. <laughs> what else did Climax had? What was that other song they had? The they, band all pause. There's a meeting in the ladies' room. Or in your case, in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> hey, only so face, look. Only Facebook people can see the face. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yesterday, just speaking of shower, you know what? I asked what was the most, you know, we, we're, we're submitting for that award. And I asked. What was the most memorable moment on the morning show <laughs> in the past year? <laughs> you think that might be it? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think so. People kept saying. they. You know what the two most memorable moments were, Todd? What? One was uh, the shower story. The mm-hmm. other one was you not knowing your crossing date. <laughs> <laughs> not knowing. Todd, so uh, when you come to, so you, when knowing, you come come to Sims on, Breakfast babe. Club for the Black Greek Day Party on Sunday, come you better on, find, find out what your uh, crossing date is. I'm like, what was those alphas doing down there, man? All right, y'all. It's the Talk of Chicago 1690. Real quick, you know we're going to be doing the uh, NBA. I'm going to be giving away a pair of tickets to NBA crossover. But before I do that, um, I want to ask about criminal justice reform. Todd, did you see um, – I talked about this just very briefly yesterday, uh, how the powers that be are now trying to dismantle the uh, the cashless bail situation. Yes. Uh, they have taken um, – they have taken Tim Evans, Chief Judge Tim Evans' uh, a report apart and dissected it. Now, they said that if you at, that when he's talked about the bail reform and how great it's been, mm-hmm. he said that uh, what the report says is that these are the crimes that he removed that, you, that he did not count. Uh, domestic battery, assault with a deadly weapon, reckless homicide, and armed violence. If you add those back in, then it is his numbers are four times higher uh, for the cashless bail system. I, I feel like all of this stuff is working in concert, right? So, you know, so who's been talking about cashless bail system? Uh, Chief Judge, but Tony Preckwinkle and Kim Fox, right? Uh, you got the, then you've got the judicial, you got the special prosecutor who is now, this is the judicial system striking back. Um, you know, for a while there, there was some kind of fight between. Uh, oh, dang it, I can't remember who, who the fighters were. Because, oh, it must have been Dick Devine and the Chief Judge. They could not get along, so nothing nothing happened. So until Devine moved, and well, I guess Alvarez didn't do anything either. Once you need to change somebody in the state's attorney's office, who would work together. Things start to change a little bit. Todd, I, I'm gonna tell you. But there's you, a lot of pushback always. I'm gonna tell you. I think that there is a full on. I think the disruption of the way that things have worked um, overall is why these judges. I mean, think about it. If you're letting people out, then you ain't got no criminal cases. You can't feel like there is a whole system of of that is. There is a whole economic. Uh, ecosystem that is built on criminal justice from oh, yeah. the towns to the lawyers to the defense lawyers to the prosecutors to everything to the lawyers who sue the county yep and it is all it is all twisted up together you know what um, but I don't know if criminal justice reform is as much of a priority for black voting black people as it is for millennials let me go to the live lines let me go to Linda 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 is this Linda? Because it was good, good to, to see, see you at the Western for the Black, Black People meeting, too. Yeah, I will be at many more, okay? That's right. you ain't getting rid of me that easy. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, WVON Village. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Right. Now, as far as Bloomberg, look, everybody should know that ain't nothing but a front. Because every time Black people in New York get uh, so-called crucified, where was he at? He wasn't out in the street with nobody hollering about injustice. Now, all of a sudden, you get injustice on your mind for black people. I mean, it was right in your face, Bloomberg, all the time. You did not step up, I mean, against Donald Trump when you could have got him with uh, 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 Central Park, the Central Park fat. Where were you then? Well, see, that's my thing, Linda. I guess my question is, this is about schizophrenic black people, man, because I'm saying we right now, Donald Trump talked about the Central Park Five. 
Mm -hmm. right? Michael Bloomberg had his own live action version of it. And it wasn't Bloomberg Five. I mean, it wasn't the uh, it wasn't the Central Park Five. It was the Bloomberg Five Hundred Thousand, the number of black yeah. people that got locked up. Yeah. And I yeah. just, you know, I I'm listening to the commercials and I'm like, oh, he's saying all the right stuff now. <laughs> and it's like, what, what? How much does it take? Uh, does it? How much money does it take for us to have amnesia? Thank you, Linda. Randy P on Top Chicago, sixteen ninety. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning Ronnie P. Listen, what you know is missing, and I'm going to ask the both of you all to answer questions in your life and in your conversation with the people in your circle. Have you ever heard where it is God's wrath with the things that go on? Bloomberg says he's not trying to buy it, but he may end up being the, the Democratic choice. The uh, impeachment trial and his decision is proof of how things the world works, not how you think it works or how you want it to work. It's how the world works. And today, in our time, we're falling under God's wrath with people like Bloomberg, Trump, and the white who say they're not racist. Well, they're not. If they tell you they're not racist, ask them who they vote for. You know what, Ronnie P., so I'm going to tell you. Um, I, like, I, I am challenged with this whole Bloomberg thing. I really am. And it's, it is... I, I don't see any difference between Bloomberg and, and Conway. Like, just on scale. Hmm. But there's no difference, right? I mean, like, here you have a person who has literally proven what he, like, I'm, I'm saying, like, the stop and frisk was the baseline, ground zero for the criminal justice reform fight. Do y'all remember everybody crying about Khalif Browning? You probably don't because you didn't watch it. It was a four-week series. I was just thinking, like, and I was saying, like, and this guy locked this kid up, and billions of dollars make it go away. That same billions of dollars that we're willing to to, to forget everything else, because Salim says black people being pragmatic, right? We're going to pragmatic our ass right back into jail. I don't understand how I do because I understand the economics. And I'm not ever telling nobody to take a vow of poverty. I'm not. But I think there are some things, like to me, what Bloomberg is teaching black white people is, oh, you can buy them Negroes. <laughs> you just need enough money, right? And so, again, and in Illinois, you really don't need that much money because, I mean, we had an example of a very wealthy, powerful Jewish billionaire uh, getting black people to vote for them in spite of their actions. Right. And it didn't cost them nothing. Yeah, I, I still don't like the, I don't <laughs> like the look. Uh, stop and frisk, unfortunately, turned out to be more like, just stop black people, you'll be all right. And He said that. Yeah. He said that. He said, and, and so my question, and it's like, and then y'all gonna be crying I don't understand how y'all, I don't understand the difference between Trump and Bloomberg, and I don't understand the difference between Conway and Bloomberg. I'm, I'm, I'm with you with the Trump and Bloomberg. I have to look at the Conway thing a little closer, but I can see where you're going with that. I, 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 again, he ain't for you, but it's like he got a lot of money, so we'll right. take it. I mean, and you can find the argument. Can I tell you, people call me up. I have preachers and pastors call me up to tell me how to justify they were going against Kim Fox because they didn't do nothing for me. I'm going to tell you, ain't nobody did nothing yes, for me. Yes, I can't stand that. Ain't did nothing for me. me but me. I'm saying like, man, so you rather, because you ain't, because this dude, unbelievable. Look, y'all, we're going to continue this conversation when we come back. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up on the... Greasy, how is Derek? Hmm? Power. Oh. 
And I got to do the ticket giveaway. Ty, talk to the people. 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 We keep on pushing. Stop picking in your nose. <laughs> there is a, there's always a, uh, okay, I guess you've done that. There's always the fear of giving million, billion, well, I guess it's billionaires now. Giving billionaires more power than they have just by being rich. And I, you know, I see it with the president. You kind of feel like you can do whatever you want. We already know that the governor, you know, he, he doesn't really need a a group behind him. He kind of pays for it, a group, and they'll jump behind him. It's, it's like Mays was just saying about, you know, preachers saying they haven't done anything for me. Everyone's looking for some kind of a job. Uh, and you know, Mays, as May says, that government does make uh, millionaires, it's, it's true. But there's also, what do you do that they make you millionaires at? And we're, uh, at least I'm not, I'm not against the social service network, but I realize that that is never going to really stir a black economy. We're in a capitalistic society, and if we don't have entrepreneurs who make money and are able to send their children to to uh, schools, and we say they come out, they'll be uh, in some form accepted in the society and are are well uh, trained. You know, we'll we'll never get off the dime we're in now, and you really can't. Cross that that uh, gap in capital that we have compared to the other groups. Uh, that's I, I, I say that's the biggest our biggest hurdle is the lack of access to capital. And you know, uh, some people tell me that yeah there are there is capital out there, but it it, it must be pretty darn hard to get. You know, uh, our neighborhoods, this is how I look at it right now, our neighborhoods lack because we've never truly had a strong bank base. Uh, even when Seaway and Independence, they never were able to, to collect truly enough assets to be uh, as independent as they needed to be. You know. As I said before, I just learned at the frogs meeting that when people, the banks, were doing whatever federal program it was, where they would deposit some of their assets into black banks to help them with uh, their numbers, they still dictated where that money went. So you're still loaning money out to, to people in, in you know, Orland. Uh, uh, Franklin or whatever, Frankfurt, somewhere, instead of in the, our neighborhoods. Because people always felt that Seaway wasn't really loaning the money out in the neighborhoods. Well, now we know why. I mean, I just think, like, somebody said, how much will the niggas cost? Oh, yes. I mean, it's a shame so many people are, are sold on the cheap. In the rain, come we can make back the sabana to remember taking his tears away. What needs you around to ruin me? Tell light was so unkind, but the sweat fell to beside me. Unbreak my heart. Say you love me again. Run do this hurt your falls when you walked out the door and walked out of my life. 
Unbrand these tears I cried so many nights Unbreak my heart Good morning. My heart Y'all know I'm about to. I'm doing the show right now, right? Oh, are you? Are you live? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He, 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 he's singing. She said hi. Huh? <laughs> she said hi. Hi. <laughs> you are tuned into the Top of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host Tosh Trojan. That used to be my jam, man. That used to be my jam, boy. That's got a lot of feelings. Unbreak my heart. Say you love me again. Unprove this hurt you caused when you walked out the door and walked out of my life. Uncry these tears. I cried so many nights. All right, y'all. I'm sorry. I can it's, see why uh, these, uh, these singers can get big heads. Hey, man. I'm telling you, that's I'll, I'll be getting a big head, and I can't even sing. All right, now I'm gonna tell y'all what. Get your num Get your pens and papers out. Uh, three one two three seven four eight one three zero. After I take these calls, I'm gonna clear the lines, and we're gonna give away a pair of tickets to the NBA crossover. What's up to Lewis? Lewis, you're on the Talk Chicago 1690. What's, What's up? up? Good morning, Mays. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Good morning. Lewis. Hey, uh, you, you say does criminal justice uh, matter to uh, the black people, to the Negro people? Uh, uh, tell, tell me, me Lewis. Uh, remember, uh, Richard Pryor had a saying that uh, when he goes to court. He sees nobody down there but just us. You know, okay, so in reference to that, this is what didn't happen. Remember Camelia Harris and uh, how she was out there uh, uh, trying to run for uh, president, but she had forgot that she had locked up a lot of black people, and the same people she had locked up, she wanted them to turn around and be her, uh, and, and be her backing, you know, and, and to vote for her. And I, I think they forgot about that. You I, know. I think, you know what I think, Lewis? I think what happened was she didn't have no money. That, I mean, really. Because quite frankly, they had, Bloomberg had enough money to make people forget. I don't think, uh, as much as I didn't care for Kamala Harris, she ain't halfway did as much as Mike Bloomberg. Let me go to Tim. Tim, you're on Top Chicago 1690. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? All right. Listen, um, Bloomberg and Trump, they made out of the same cloth. There's no difference. When, 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 Bloomberg, when Bloomberg lost his, his, his lawsuit with, with the stop and frisk, he asked the judge, can, can he continue to practice and, until, until the appeal? She told him no. If, she, if, he, if he don't stop that practice right away, she was going to hold him in contempt of court. And th and that was the only reason that he stopped. And then not only that, not and not only that, Donald Trump praised Bloomberg for that stop and frisk practice that he was doing. I'm telling y'all, this is the thing. It's like, yeah, but y'all don't. Again, I'm telling you, Negroes go cheap. Mrs. Johnson, Mrs. Johnson, real quick, you got 30 seconds. Good morning, Maze. How are you this morning? I'm great, Mrs. Johnson. Now, just because it's you, I got you. Got actually a minute now. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, okay. No, you want to know why black people are voting for Bloomberg? Why? It's because these these um, brainwashed preachers taking uh, money under the table, and they are telling their members who to vote for. That's my answer. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. I just don't understand. I just don't understand. I mean, me, I mean I'm mean, i just saying. Like, and it's good, because I'm... I'm I, mm. Ty, mm -hmm. stop and frisk was the undergird of the whole criminal justice reform movement. It, it was. And it, it is amazing to me that we have completely forgotten that. But you know what? What I did not forget was that we got to give away these tickets to the NBA crossover. Dang. Now, you all trying to go to the NBA crossover, let me tell you what. Because it is exciting. I'm going to be looking for caller number six. The NBA, so right now, clear the lines. Clear lines, caller number six. 
Call the number 60. NBA All-Star 2020 Crossover is a live event happening to this weekend at Navy Pier. It's an attract, it's an interactive atmosphere. There'll be live performances, artist visits, and special appearances by Ronnie 2K, Hebrew Brantley, and more. Y'all think y'all give me get Hebrew Brantley, give me one of those fly boys. Plus, be the sixth call. What did I say? Sixth call? Be the sixth caller right now at 312-374-8130, and you can win tickets to the NBA crossover. Look, Ty, I'm looking yeah. for the sixth caller. What? See, I'm going to tell you, sixth caller. Why you talking? What? See, why you talking? He, you, he be running around here doing stuff. This is, see, when I'm famous, I'm going to make all the white people do what I say. <laughs> right? I'm gonna be like the white people. Like I keep telling you, I I think I'm, I figured it out. When I get rich and filthy, stupid rich, uh -huh. you know what I'm gonna do? What? I'm gonna hire all white servants. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have black staff and white servants. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I'm gonna be like, <clears throat> and I'm gonna have a bell. It's gonna go ding 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 ding, ding. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna be like, excuse me, could you turn the channel? They'll be like, sir, you have a remote control. I know. Could you use the remote control to turn the channel? Yeah, they won't even say that. They'd be like, yes, sir. <laughs> that's exact, and that's exact. I don't want no lip out of you. Mm -hmm. I don't want no lip out of you. Ty, when we come back, we're going to announce the winner of the NBA crossover. And don't forget, I still got one more pair of tickets. Also, I want everybody to come hang out with me this Sunday. I'm telling you, it's going down. Ty, you got plenty of time to find out your cross date because it's a black Greek uh, day party, <laughs> and I, don't, I just don't want nobody because you know when the Sigma see you, they're gonna be like, What's your prostate? You know, I'm telling you, I was at a uh, I, we were watching a national I'm meeting. only mad at you because that was a pretty good joke. Ty, I was just telling you, <laughs> we was watching the national president, he was speaking to like a big body of people, uh huh, of Sigmas, and you know, he was like. He said, he, you are now like the poster child for five years. <laughs> They're like, yes, we'll talk about it more when we come back. Just touch that. Let's I told you I'm in the talk of Chicago uh, and the voice of the. <laughs> and that's the Sentinel, not the, the, uh, the Crescent. What? The magazine. Our magazine is the Crescent. Is it really? Yes. There's also a, a Sentinel. That I don't know if, the, if it was a. a the story. Sentinel is a chapter publication. Oh, okay, that's what I figured. So that's not what you figured. That's not what you figured. You thought it was Oz. No, that's chapter publication. It's still it's, yours. It's, Your chapter ain't part of the group. No, that's what I figured once you said the Crescent. I wonder why I knew the Crescent was a magazine. <laughs> Unbreakable. Take 312-374-8130. Uh, I do believe that everybody has a price. Um, I just think that the price is too low. Like, I mean, Bloomberg would have to offer up, like, he would have to say, I'm going to personally pledge 10 billion of my own money to the reparations movement. I mean, think about it. Think, of, I mean, but if you got 50 and you say, I'm, I'm going to personally, could you imagine if you said, I'm going to put $10 billion into the reparations fund Right now, and everybody, shit, niggas would be like, I, I. Actually, if he said I put a billion, they'd be like, Yep, you know? and they don't, cause they don't understand how small a billion is now. Yeah, billions, yeah. I mean, don't get it twisted, cause a hundred thousand is a lot to me <laughs> in one spot, in one city. Man, I am going to take a nap. I'm going to go to Jim Alita's event with Rich Paul. You going to talk about RuPaul? Oh, no, Todd. That would be you. No. I said you Rich said. Paul. Rich Paul. Rich Paul, the super agent, the uber agent. Oh. What up, Deacon? Deacon! Deacon, you want to come join the church, man? Hey, y'all, make sure y'all vote for uh, Felicia Simmons Stovall for judge, too. I need some All Star Saturday, some NBA All Star Saturday Night tickets. Saturday 
I need to go to the slam dunk contest. I be laughing. Don't forget Bobby Rush is performing at uh Bobby Rush is performing at uh the Harold Washington Cultural Center. Hun cry these tears. It cried so many nights. Unbreak my heart. Yar, 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 yar. Don't leave me. Don't leave. How much time I got? How much time I got? One more chance. Stay listening. They listening, I. I'm the champ. Freely. Over on the Lakeshore Drive, you're looking at a 26 minute commute, outbound 19 minutes. Over on the Eisenhower Route 390 to the old post office, 50 minutes in, half an hour out. Over on the Kennedy, O'Hare to downtown, you're looking at a one hour, 10 minute commute, solid traffic between Montrose and the Jane Byrne Interchange, outbound half an hour. Over on Lakeshore Drive, northbound, Marquette to Monroe right now, you're looking at solid traffic between the Stevenson and Balbo Drive due to an accident where those two right lanes are blocked. Over on southbound Lake Shore Drive, Hollywood to Monroe, you're looking at a 33 minute commute. Mostly sunny and cold today with highs in the teens. Tonight, down to 12, it's currently one degree. That's a look at traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson, it's 807 on 1690 AM, WVON. From the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine.
Mm-hmm. We're being less love tonight. Cause you do it right. Baby, what like you're loving. I need to love in. Baby, I can't hold it much longer. It's getting stronger and stronger. When I get that feeling, I want sexual healing. Sexual healing. It's good. Makes me feel so fine. Man, so me lose my mind. Healing it, baby. Healing is something that's good for me. Whenever blue teardrops are falling, and and my emotional stability is healing me. There is something I can't do. Oh, just get on the phone and call you a baby. And open me. I know you'll be there to relieve my love you give to me. It'll be. If you don't know the things you've given. Oh, I don't tell you, darling, that sexual healing. Let's make love tonight. Cause you do it right. Baby. I looked up this morning. I saw this woman and swat me. Baby. Get me sizing. And we are rising. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Tor Stroger. But you know how we do at the top of the hour. Gotta say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar, the music conductor of the soul playing. So- Sonia, look, Sonia back there practicing. She back there practicing for uh for her uh you know the human drink magnet <laughs> right she keep coming in here bringing us her valentine's day gifts like she get Thank donuts you and you know she got donuts but you know somebody handed her them donuts on the way out the door <laughs> like i brought you some look see oh, she like man. i told you i knew it i knew it. you got to watch sonya man you got to watch sonya all right y'all it's the top of the hour um did, is sherman on the line all right well let me tell you what y'all uh, uh first of all this segment we're going to be talking about all the great things. The NBA All-Star uh, game is in town this weekend. There's so much going on. Uh, there's so much going on that it is... Uh, I want to make sure that everybody in Chicago gets to participate. Now, we just gave away a pair of tickets to the NBA crossover. Is Sherman there? Sherman, you want to talk Chicago 1690? Man, somebody told me you won some tickets to the NBA All-Star crossover. Is that true? All right, right, sir. All, All right, right Sherman. Sherman. Let, Let me ask a question. Who are you taking? It's Valentine's Day. You, you take your lady, lady, you take one of the brothers. I'm not so sure right this moment. <laughs> you better, look, you, you better, better, you better, better uh, what, let me tell you what, I'm not going to say your name because your lady is probably listening right now. And she probably like, what you mean you're not sure? Yeah. It's Valentine's Day. You she probably going to tell you you got to give them away. If you ain't taking her, you better give them to somebody. But Sherman, I tell everybody what, uh, t- wait, what part of the city you from, Sherman? I'm from Woodlawn. Woodlawn? Right in Chicago. All right, Woodlawn. All right, man. You, they ain't trying to run you out of town, Molly. No, but uh, they began to look at me strange because I look like a brother, like a blue-collar worker. Uh-oh. What, they don't want no blue-collar workers in Woodlawn? <laughs> no, the neighborhood is changing. Oh, Lord, don't tell me it's been an invasion. <laughs> of course it has been. Oh, man. Well, let me tell you what, Sherman. You make sure that you go kick it this weekend, and then we're going to talk about this. We're going to kick it for, we're going to party this weekend. And then after we get through party, we're going to come back, and then I'm going to just bring you all the way back on around. Hey, Sherman, we appreciate you tuning in. Hey, guys, there's one more chance to win tickets to the NBA All-Star 2020 crossover. I've been talking about it all week. I'm going to let y'all know you are going to see some of the top NBA celebrities uh, over at Navy Pier as well. As, man, Todd, they got so much going on. There is so much stuff going on all over the place. Are you So 
I, I, I want to talk, talk about All Star Weekend because I, I feel some kind of way. To, I feel some kind of way about All Star Weekend because I told you, I feel like I'm a star in Chicago. This is my town. See what you should feel is it's been like 25 years. It may not be back around. Next time it'll be back around, I'll be like 80. Oh man. But well, shoot, that, that air when the Bulls win again. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question, Todd. Um, well, so let me say this. I have been, as you know, we were talking about this other day. I've been on the hunt to, uh, you know, my son is an NBA junkie. He loves basketball. He loves basketball, basketball since he was three. And so, Todd, you know, I offered my son, I said, look, man, if we skip this All-Star weekend, we can go to Jamaica and you can watch the game from Jamaica. He was like, no, Dad, I got to go to the games. <laughs> um, and so I was, you know, I've scoured all of the websites and looked for all the tickets. And Todd, I'm telling you, I was looking for tickets and to sit like in. You mean you, mean you were looking for reasonable tickets? Oh, well, I was looking for, I thought reasonable. Well, what I thought was, well, you know, I was prepared to pay, you know, $500 a ticket, something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was going to splurge. And you know what 500 tickets got you? $500 got you? What? A parking pass. <laughs> a parking pass. A oh parking pass. And it's like everywhere you go there. But it, it, it got me to thinking about, and you know, so I find. All made you know, I know a guy in Craigslist. You know, uh, mm-hmm. see, yeah. see, we gotta watch you. We gotta watch you. And first of all, don't, help. don't buy your tickets from Craigslist. Right, don't buy tickets from Craigslist because you will wind up knocked over the head because they don't say no. Don't buy unless you tell them to meet you at the police station, and then Uh you meet them at the police station and they got counterfeit tickets. Man, you know, man. So I got my tickets. I got a pair of tickets to the All Star Game. It sounds like you need to take the Madison Street bus too. Man, I'm not taking Madison. I'm walking. I'm walking to the game. Oh yeah, why not? Not paying five hundred dollars to park two blocks from my house. (laughs) So anyway, Todd, they, they charge somebody else five hundred dollars. Right. I should, I should say, you want to park him out? You want? You want to park him out? Ooh, let me stop. I don't want nobody coming to talk to me. Right. Uh, Todd. The revenue be knocked on your door. Yes. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Jackson. I see you've uh, been charging people to park on you. But Todd, here's what I um, what I was thinking about. You know, when I used to travel, like when I was um, when I was a young lad, and I would go to the All Star Games around the country. I would save up a few thousand dollars so I could have pockets full of cash no. and then I would get there and I would just burn all through it and it would be like but then, now that I'm older it's like I, I, I want to do all NBA All-Star weekend on a budget and so did you know and what I always used to think about it, whenever I go to sporting events there were two types of people that went to the events there was the people who came to be in the town but didn't go to nothing official. Yeah, right. and, then that, and then there was the people who were in town because they were supposed to be there. Well, Todd, what I have learned is that when events like the NBA All-Star Game come to town, it is an international event, and so everybody descends on the town who wants to market a product. Because, you know, you got every camera from everywhere in the world except China <laughs> here this weekend. So what I think I want to do is when we come back, I want to talk about some of the great things that you can do, uh, even if you don't have two thousand dollars to buy a ticket. Right. So I, oh, last night, Carrie and I—I I, I keep using this, but Carrie and I went out to uh, Soho, and while we were at Soho, we were people watching. Man, it was some awesome, awesome, awesome people watching. Like I ran into uh, JB Smooth bumped into me. Oh, JB Smooth. And you know, and it's like he is hilarious, and you know, cause he's from Larry David, but you know, cause I'm from Chicago, I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's Jamie Smooth. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Then I was like, when I saw Scottie Pippen, I was like, man. I remember like it was the good old days. I remember like when Scottie Pippen and them used to be partying, they would party at Enters in the Glass VIP so everybody could see them partying, but they couldn't yeah. get to them. Yeah. That was good stuff. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, man, there are everything from day parties to parties to free events, to activations, to even Mountain Dew has got events where you can come bring your whole family. So look, I, when we come back, we're going to tell you some few things to do. Maybe some restaurants if you want to take your kids and see some celebrities, some NBA super, superstars, where people will be hanging out, how you can enjoy NBA All-Star Weekend without spending $50,000. It's a tough shot. We'll be back. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up on the top. Scotty Tiffin used to call my dad, homeboy. That's, uh, that's, 
what people do when they, they want don't to remember. Get, or they don't remember your name. No, 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 that's how they start when they want you to hire one of their relatives. <laughs> <laughs> No, they don't remember your name after you hire. <laughs> right. Uh, I've decided that from now on, anybody that I help, like they gotta, they gotta give it, they gotta put back. It's like I feel like people take the help and think that they're owed the, owed the help. Yeah. Right. What drives me nuts is um, people who get politically hired, but they think they smart. Mm -hmm. Like, like, I, like I nobody mean, else can do this job with me. Right. No, I don't think that's quite how it works. All just got another sneak peek at the mole. He was right over where Todd is right now. You mean like Little Maze? Mm -mm, Little Maze isn't there anymore. No, I mean like he was like lurking behind me on my shoulder. <laughs> no, I swapped out your picture. Oh. And it's 820 on 1690 AM WVON. The Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON is your black history-making station. Download the iHeartRadio app and listen live wherever you go. The Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. The following is a paid advertisement by Purity Pro You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mae Jackson. Got my co-host, to us, Children Todd. It is All-Star Weekend. It is officially upon us. And you know what, man? Uh, if you do not have $100,000, $50,000, $10,000, if you can't spend $2,000 a ticket, I got... You know what? Y'all want me to tell y'all my trick on how to get into these games for way cheaper? I bet you do. 
You have to wait till a little bit later. I tell you. But I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what you want to do is get some things. Hmm? I'm telling you. I got. A, I got a fail safe system. Works for the All Star Game, Super Bowl, all the stuff. It's just if you got the guts to do it. Do you have the guts? We're gonna talk about it in a second. All right, but Todd. Um, so there's so much going on, even if you can't buy tickets. So one of the things I like is, um, did we get the people watchers? Did you give me my list of restaurants? I, the list of restaurants, because there should be um, restaurants that you might want to go to. Um, well, you know, like, you know what I think you're going to see people at right away? All the steakhouses. Oh, you know those. So you know Chicago Cut, Maple and Ash. Uh, what is it? Chicago Cut, Maple and Ash. Um, Gibson's is going to probably be off the chain, right? Sullivan's, you know, well, but then you know what else is going to be cracking? Uh, so, uh, Shula's, because you know the whole, man, man, so that's going to be cracking. So if you want to go look at people, I bet if you go to restaurants all up and down Randolph and the West Loop, because one of the things that I've been noticing is that, you know, the All-Star game is in two places, is in three, there's like three hubs. So the first place is like it's at Wintrust Arena. Right. So tonight the celebrity game is there at Wintrust. Ah. Uh, and then the the Wintrust game is there. And I couldn't understand how they were gonna do this. So Wintrust today at six o'clock is a celebrity all star celebrity all star game. Then which our very own Lil Rel Howery is playing in. You know what? And check this out. Hannibal Burris is playing in too. Yeah. You know, here you know Hannibal Hannibal Burris is being rewarded for the takedown of Bill Cosby. That's what he's getting. Right. Um, then you've got uh, over at the United Center tonight is going to be the uh, Rising Stars game. Ah. Right? So you're going to see the second year versus the first year. I don't know how I got to get in it, but yeah. Okay. Then, um, then there's just a ton of after parties. There's parties all over the place. Um, then tomorrow... You've got, I'll be actually headed over to uh, interview some of the players. You might want to check out my Facebook Live because I'm going to be checking out Team G and what, uh, what's Team G and News? What's his name? Oh, uh, no. Uh, the Greek Freak. Yeah. yeah. And Team thing. LeBron. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be interviewing members from Greek Freak and Team LeBron tomorrow. Um, so you want to check that out. Then uh, tomorrow's All-Star Saturday Night. Hey, I'm still looking for tickets for All-Star Saturday Night. I want to take my boy, man. Yeah, but wait, you skipped something. What? The uh, skills. Oh, the, the skills. Well, that's all Star Saturday night. Oh, okay. So that all is tonight. The three point. I mean, tomorrow three point dunk contest skills challenge. Right. right. Yeah. Then Sunday is the big game. Now that's all the NBA sanctioned stuff. And let me tell you, the NBA is doing so much around town right now. They are doing all types of service projects. Uh, but if you want your children the opportunity to experience the All Star game, head down to Navy Pier all weekend. There'll be player interviews. There'll be players, there'll be games. Look, they even got the junior junior NBA uh, regionals happening down at uh, Navy Pier. So I, I think I'm going to send the kids down there. You know what I'm saying? But that's a great place for the kids to go where they can mix and mingle and get the ex NBA experience, plus see a lot of the stars, et cetera, that are in town. I wonder if Hans and Claire be interested. Let me know if Claire is interested. I could probably make something happen. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Maison could probably make something happen. Uh, not me, Lil Maison. Right. Um, uh, then, um, but then there's also so man, my boy Ahmed uh, from 1045 Marketing. He's got the Mountain Dew challenge, right? So Ahmed is gonna be for three days. You can go to the. You gotta get the hookup though. But you know, over they're gonna be having um, it's family. So like during the day, you can bring your kids. Hang out, they can play basketball, see all that good stuff. Todd, and then hang out. Now, do uh, you know Conan O'Brien is in town too? So he's got the Coco Studios. Remember, um, remember Darius Miles? Yeah. Okay, so Darius Miles and Quentin Richardson do a podcast. Yes, I think I remember that. Uh, and so their podcast that they're doing, they're going to be doing it live. Right? They're going to be doing it live so you can get tickets to that. But you can also check this out. Shaq. Darius Miles was hurt. Yeah, he got hurt. He was like, remember, he was super high ranked. He was like one of those high school phenoms and got hurt. Right. But him and Quentin Richardson developed a lifelong friendship, and so now they do this podcast. Right, 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 right. Um, oh, Team Coco House. So they're going to have Craig Robinson, the Nasty Delicious, will be there Friday night. Roy Wood Jr., Nicole Byer, Jermaine Fowler will be there for funny duties on Saturday night. And it's also the Real Deal Papa Shot Tournament, an NBA Skills Challenge watch party. That's uh, you can get tickets to that for only ten dollars. 
Craig right. Robinson's gonna do him? Yeah. He's from the neighborhood. Man, does he remember that? <laughs> now don't forget there's also a, a all-star, uh, all-black yacht party. Man, I don't think that's NBA sanctioned. Uh, plus you got the uh, sneaker summit. Right, so if your kids like sneakers, they're gonna have over in Wicker Park in the Emporium, they're gonna have all the sneakers on sale. Check this out. Shaq Diesel is going to do, you know everybody's a DJ now. Like, I think everybody wants to be a DJ. So Real Shaq, in it. hey man, Shaq is going to be spinning, and he's going to have a DJ. He's going to be a DJ. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be over at uh, Sid's Breakfast Club. You, uh, Chicagoans for the Black Greek uh, Day Party. Mm. Y'all need to get that. I'm going to be day partying before I go to the uh, All-Star game. Um, you also, know, I was in the Renaissance Hotel once, mm -hmm. wait for something, and all these tall people came in. It was the Heat basketball team. You don't realize just how huge these basketball players are until there's like a crowd of them around. Here. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, it's funny, man. Um, it is. So have you seen that meme about uh, right that all six four black people from Chicago are gonna be walking around because nobody knows like the anonymous teams and the girls are gonna be. And That's they, how it was when the uh, Bears played in the Super Bowl. In New Orleans, uh, the basketball players got jobs as security, <laughs> and they're like everybody thought they were football players. I'm gonna tell you what, um, and like everybody thinks that everybody is gonna be doing. So I'm gonna tell you, man, this All Star Weekend, we probably need to put together a warning list of things to look out for. Like if she got a choker on, you better be careful. <laughs> be careful. If that choker is moving up and down. Right. right it, Look. Oh, I get it now. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, okay. Right, you don't want to be no Instagram story. Also, to all these NBA players that's not from Chicago, bro, like all that extra jewelry and all that extra stuff, can right. I tell you something? You, you, I'm going to tell you, Chicago around here, there, ain't nobody thinking about you on TV. <laughs> Matter of fact, the fact you're on TV, they'll be like, they're going to put your stuff on Instagram, so be careful with your jewelry. Hey, my man Vern, you know Vern from the Lions, then, you know, he's got the, he rented out the hard rock. Uh, hard Rock, and so he's going to be at the Hard Rock all weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, day party all the way. I'm just telling you, and, and he's got Patrick Beverly from Chicago coming. Everybody's got something, and there are a lot of events. So if you are looking to participate this weekend, man, I'm going to tell you there's a lot of sites. But can I tell you what I also want to see happen? Because y'all know that the NBA is going to make Chicago blow up economically. How much of that economically blow up will be Chicago, will be black people? Mm. Wouldn't it be dope if like all the black basketball players was like we going? Oh, cause look, if the black basketball wherever the black basketball players go, everybody gone. That's where the camera's going to. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. If they always Sonya, why are you fixing your hair? See, this is Sonya, the human drink magnet around here, trying to get ready for All Star Weekend. Get your hair, your nails did. All right, we'll be back. Or oh, tell me something good Friday when we come back. Live from the WBON Newsroom, here's our news now. What? Guys, I made the best ice cream. I gotta get some softer caramel though. So I made the best ice cream. It is Salerno butter cookies with extra vanilla and um, caramel chips. When I tell you the ice cream is so good, the problem is the caramel chips. I used um, Kraft caramel and it's not soft enough when it freezes. What I gotta figure out is how to make a caramel ribbon um, that I can put in the ice cream maker while it's freezing so that it doesn't melt the ice cream. So it's warm enough to melt and drizzle so that, because what I want to do is keep a strip of caramel. All right. We used to make uh, Man, I used to love when my auntie made ice cream. I got a recipe now, though, that's so good and so simple. Two cups of half and half, two cups of heavy whipping cream, a tablespoon of vanilla, um, and a three-quarters of a cup of, I use brown sugar, not white sugar. Uh, of and, course. And guess what? You freeze that bad boy, let it get super cold, put it in the ice cream freezer. In 30 minutes, you got some of the bombest ice cream. And then what I do is when it starts to harden, I crunch up the Salerno butter cookies in it so that it's all mixed. Because Salerno butter cookies are the best ice cream cookies. 
right? So then, what I the first time I did it, I poured the caramel in, I, like I heated it up in the microwave and poured it in, but it melted the ice cream and the it took the cold cool down so quick. So, but when I froze it and took it out, it was epic. But I wanted the ice. I want to get a caramel dip. So this time I'm gonna try Werther's soft chocolates, and then I'm gonna just stretch it out and let the machine pull it in. But hmm. Claire made cookies last night for French class. See, good woman, man. You're training all right. She make good cook. She she can cook too. I I knock something off your diary for that too. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing a skill. Uh, 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 we were going to invest in some goats. So <laughs> couple I don't want the old hair goats. What's wrong with the old hair goats? The ones that eat the grass. They probably eating jet fuel too. <laughs> Who would think of that? Me, after I saw the story. Yeah, we'll get them from my uh, money. It's like, I, if I didn't know it was goat meat, I wouldn't be a problem with it. But it's like, when I know it's goat meat, I'd lie. I've never had goat. Yeah, you have. You just didn't know it. You have been to a Mason joint? A what kind? Mason. You mean like? Cookout. Oh, no, I don't think I have, really. Oh, okay. <sighs> and I really don't eat Jamaican food, so... I've had Jamaican food, but it's always been like chicken. At least that's what I always stick with chicken. It's like, I'd be like, Jamaica, Jamaica. I'm going to tell you what, though. We go back to, um, shit, I can't think of the name of it right now. But anyway, the last resort we stayed at in Jamaica was. So I, I feel like I need to, t like, it's quiet. Like, I want to go up. Just So I think we might try to hide it. Which is still upscale. Like, I feel like you gotta stay at an American hotel to get good food. Because when. Are you at a European hotel? No, I mean. There's such a thing. I feel like. Is there restaurant stuff in there? There's some kind of thing? Sure. Jamaica, Jamaica. Here's the thing if you wanted to hit that for Jamalita, the one big granite. Oh, yeah. I can't buy the news, but I don't think it's online. I'm so sleepy. <laughs> yeah, me too. How about you, Tom? Okay, me three. Yes. All right. I've been yawning all day. Did you catch a nap yesterday? Because I did the podcast and never go. I know. I was, well, I saw you last night come back here. I was like, you look well rested. Oh, uh, I mean, because it's like the I don't hit the wall. Like, if I don't stop, I'm fine. I hit the wall about 3 o'clock yesterday, man. It was like crash. Who was that who was snapping off? That, that was uh, Sydney. She does the station social media and stuff. So then buy a damn tripod. Yeah, like seriously, and yeah. like you snapped off on me like that? Like yeah. Like I was just like, ma, first of all, and for the people who've been like <laughs> Maze, was it a dream? <laughs> it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. Hanging pictures on my wall. You get paid to wear that shirt, Todd? Did you no. say paid? It was free. I wear, I wear just about anything free as long as it doesn't say anything to Facebook. I used to love free. I love the video games. I had so many free t shirts. Yeah, I gotta go take a nap now. Like, I'm gonna go home and look at What time do your media events start today? Yeah, tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll buy about half. I love to cook too. I want to buy. I want to cook a cow. I actually want to do a pig. I, I know, I know. Before y'all go down, but man, to I would like to roast 
a whole cow on a spit. I need some good recipes. Sponsored. I can't never think of nothing to eat. It's like I always go back to the same stuff. She was cheating. She got caught. Damn, my eyes. So I gotta make the song cry. Can't see him coming down my eyes. So I gotta make the song cry. Look, dude. Cook food. Having four seasons brunch. The bad weather. Cause you held no punches. Probably won't let me show it. So sick. I can't see him coming down my eyes, so I gotta make the song cry. I can't see him coming down my eyes, so I gotta make the song cry. I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta make the song cry. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 16 a.m. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Trojan. A title it is Tell Me Something Good Fridays. It's NBA All-Star Weekend, so I got a lot to talk about, but... It is Tell Me Something Good Friday. Uh, I got something good for you. Before the end of this show, I am going to give one lucky winner a chance to win tickets to the NBA crossover. You going to be ready? You got to have your phones ready. I'm going to take caller number 7-312-374-8130. 312-374-8130. Win tickets to, you know what, I'm feeling, I'm feeling kind of frisky. So let's do this. Let's take the six caller now. If you are the six caller right now, you will be able to win a pair of tickets to the NBA Crossover 2020 All-Star event. Now it's gonna be at the at, uh, Navy Pier and you will be able to see cultural icons. You will be able to see some of your favorite players. Uh, you will not want to miss this. NBA Crossover tickets, we give them to the WVON listeners. Call it number six right now, 312 6. 312 374 8130. 312 374 8130. Now, Todd, what else? You, you got something to tell me something good Friday? I, I, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I bought some tickets to the uh, Peace Game at St. Sabina's Avenue. Peace Game. Uh, you know, Peace in the Neighborhood. Okay. When is that? Tomorrow at uh, 9 o'clock at St. Sabina. AM? Huh? Yeah. Why are you yeah. asking me? See how you do? I'm not messing You're always doing something. something. Man, okay, go ahead. So tell me about it. Derrick Rose is the special guest. Oh, shout out. Man, now I'm going to have to come over there because my son loves him some D-Row. Does he? I mean, my, that is my son's favorite player. Even Man, I'm telling you, I think when he got hurt, my son might have cried. And like my son, every every year, every time the trade deadline, he like, please bring him back. Please bring him back. Please well, this doesn't always back, happen, but... I got four tickets. So. You got four tickets. So I got you, man. You got me? You got my boy? I got your boy. You bringing Claire? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, see, you working on that dowry. All right, so Todd's tell me something good. He's got some tickets. I, I'm going to tell you what my tell me something good is. What's that? I, I was feeling some kind of way because all the people came into town and all these people, I, you know, people was calling me like, Maze, could you help me um contact such and such? I want them to be my host of my party. I'm like, wait. So you, you called me to ask me to get you, help you hire somebody else besides me. Shout out to Sid, Sybil Holloway, who is always supporting black business in Chicago. I will be hosting the Black Greek Brunch. That's right, Todd. Oh, excuse me, not brunch. 
day party. See, I like brunch because I'm trying to eat the day party this Sunday. Get make How do you dress for something like that? And how much is it? Oh, uh, well, first of all, I think it's sold out. It might be sold out. Yo, you well, know, it's now. How much I, I don't need to know any of that. No, 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 no. But you get them. So, how I dress, I'm going to be funky fresh. Dressed ready to party. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be, like, I'm going to have on some. I have like, to ask your name what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going I'm to put on, like, a, um, maybe I, you know, with all the NBA players, maybe I put on some pastels and some, you know, like, hey, what if I wore some, some, some capris, like, uh, D Wade. <laughs> like with no well, socks. I'm there, then I can get laughed at. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh! Okay. All right, man. I laugh at him. Huh? You laugh at D Wade, and I bet you wouldn't laugh at him when I'm standing right there. Yeah, I'd laugh at him. Uh huh. And then he'd be like, Smack you down! Thank you, Mr. Wade. I needed a car. <laughs> <laughs> hit me! Hit me! Hit me! You know, like, I'd be feeling like, right here. I bet you won't hit me harder. Hit me! All right, look, look wait a minute, do we, have, wait, so do we have a winner? Because I'm ready to give away these tickets to NBA Crossover. Because I'm trying to see who's going to go. Uh, I think we have a winner. Caller number six. We have a six. winner. Mike Owens. Mike, give him top Chicago 1690. Congratulations. Tell me something good, my man. Um, what's good is I just spoke with my grandson last night, and he was asking me about uh, tickets to the um, All-Star Weekend. I told him if I ever get some, I would definitely give him a call. So <laughs> looks like I'll be calling him back today. All right, right. now, so you're taking your grandson and you giving him the tickets? I'm, I'm going to give him the tickets, and uh, my son is going to take them. Oh, look at You know what? See, see, that's why I love my WVON listening family. Because um, you know what? It's like families, and it's like family. And it's, it's, you know, I love when you do things, when you hear answers like that. Um, can we get the grandson, grandson and get him on the air? Is you, you um, no, he's, he's in school? school right now. Ah, yeah. you know what? See, I knew he was in school. That's because you know Mike got good kids because kids in school, man. What y'all think? Let me tell you I was, well, let me tell you, I was trying to thank you, Mike. We appreciate you. Congratulations, man. Have a blast. You know, I tried to get my son out of school today. I was like, son. Um, why don't you bring your clothes? You know, I call myself being like, pack your bag, bring your clothes, bring your stuff to school. You know, I was going to come through school and be like, yo, let's go. We're going to the NBA. He was like, uh, dad, seems like you're planning something. But today we play, um, we play Leo. So I was, I mean, I understand the NBA is in town, but, um, <laughs> this is more important. This is direct, right? This is direct. But I'm thinking you, I think you might hit the nail on the head side or no. I wonder, does he have like a Valentine going to this game? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I got to watch this whole thing. There's more I, to this than we think. There could be more. Uh, wait, tickets are still available, twin? Wait, are there tickets? I'm looking for tickets to the. Uh, I want to go to the All Star Saturday night. Let me ask you a question. How much would you spend, Todd, to take your uh, take one of your children? to like if it was their dream like my son's dream is to um like the all-star game it never comes to chicago it's probably once in a, a lifetime can i ask you a question how much do you think i should spend on the tickets to get oh you well that's the difference don't leave me i mean if, like is there a number that's too much for your kids if i was you it would be eight hundred dollars oh eight hundred dollars man eight hundred dollars i love my son and all <laughs> I mean, I really love them. But eight hundred dollars for a ticket, you realize that's that's, that's, that's more than limit. that's that's more than tuition. <laughs> like I'd be like, look, you going to school this this month, or you going to the All Star game? All Star game, right? All right, make a choice. Make a choice. I think we know how that would end up. He's like, I'll take all. No, he'll take all. No, no, he'll take the school because because if he doesn't go to school, what does he get to do? What he doesn't get to play. All right. If this was two weeks from now. <laughs> say, no you know, more, no more season. Exactly. When the season is over. All right, man. I'm gonna tell y'all what. Uh, when we come back, we are going to wrap up. I, y'all, give me a call. Tell me something good. Three one two three seven four eight one three zero. So much has happened this week. Why don't y'all tell me what's good? What's gonna be good? What happened good? It's the Talk Show sixty ninety. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. <laughs> oh, tickets are available for Symbols event. Okay. Yeah. What I got will show sure enough do you good. Tell me something good.
Tell me that you love me, yeah. Tell me something good. Tell me that you love me. tournament it's free There was 28 hours to Love like you should I got to give well Shown up to your good. Tell me something, God. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co host, Taj Trojan. It's my favorite part of the end of the week, which is tell me something good. Hey, want to let you all know, don't forget Harold Washington Cultural Center. My cousin, Jim Alita Tillman, has got Bobby Rush. Not that Bobby Rush, mm -hmm. but the Bobby Rush, the blues man tonight. Um, don't forget, Todd, I got Sibs uh, Breakfast Club uh, Day Party, Black Greek Day Party. Tickets are still available. Go to Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite. 
go to Sibs Breakfast Club and you can pull it up. All right. Oh, I should, I, I uh, screwed up the St. Divine event. That was free. The uh, Valentine uh, Day event by Knights Peter Claver later that night is what the ticket The Knights of Peter Claver? Who the heck is Peter Claver? Uh, you know, I should be able to tell you that. Peter Peter Claver is... Was he black? Yeah, he's black. So it's like the Knights of Columbus, but the black version? Yeah, basically. So do you carry a sword? Uh, I'm not a big grip. You're not a big grip? You're I a little grip? I don't get a sword. Yeah, you just be swinging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, it is Tell Me Something Good. Don't forget, uh, Midday Madness will also, with Perry Small, will also be giving away tickets to the NBA crossover. I'm going to tell you, I'll get your tickets. Uh, Todd, let me go to the live line. Brother Ball, Brother Ball, you're on Top Chicago, 1690. Hey, man, thanks, man. I got to give a big shout out. Tell Me Something Good Friday, All Star Weekend. I got to put one of my main guys down, 30 year friend, Todd. If we would have ran into you on the court, you would have got obliterated. I'm 6'4", he was 5'10", on All-Star Weekend. I'm putting the best point guard that Inglewood had down. He played against Reggie Rose at Alden Park. So this was before uh, Derrick Rose. You know, it's, it's his older brother. So uh, other than that, man, I got I started my referee class this weekend after uh, Valentine's Day. So y'all will see me at all the high-profile IHSA games with the Golden Whistle. So be on the lookout for Brother Ball on the court near you. Wait, you Brother Ball, you a, you a, you a ref? Man, I'm getting my whistle, baby. I'm oh, getting my whistle hey. after Valentine's Day, so y'all go see me. Hey, man, I'm going to be looking for you. Hey, let me yeah. tell you, Brother my own alma mater, Todd, just in case you want to talk that crap to Simeon, so watch your mouth. You know uh, I mean? uh, <laughs> hey, you out there on that court, Todd. It's hey, St. Ignatius Wolves would, uh, we would, uh, go high. <laughs> <laughs> you, they would have a great, their, their male cheerleading squad would teach you guys a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> Even I'm like, <laughs> All right, brother Paul, we appreciate you, man. It is it, right now, man. love you too, bro. It's NBA All Star Weekend. Um, I'm gonna tell you, check out Saint Sabina. Um, I'm not gonna make fun of Father Flex. I'm not. I don't. First of all, when I say he's king of the black people, it's a title of respect, man. It's like I mean, I'm saying, but Father Flex mobilizes a lot more black people than a lot of black people he does. I know. So uh, you know, I gotta be me. I gotta be me. Yes, I did. Um. So, Todd, I'm excited uh, for NBA weekend. Um, you know, I think when we come back, I think once we get through all this NBA stuff, we really got to take a deep dive into the elections. Now, you know they say we can't have any of the candidates on air uh, because we are within the window. But, Todd, we got some real races that we need to talk about. Did you see Bernie Sanders um, endorse Kim Fox? I saw that. Let me ask. Do you think that Bernie Sanders endorsing Kim Fox makes all the other candidates say, mm, no? <laughs> no, no. No. But, but you know, it shows his base who he thinks is like him. Who gets more out of it, him or her? Hmm. I think him. I do, too. I do, too. I, I you know, I, mm. I, um, I'm excited so let me not say I'm excited. Let me say that Todd, this is a this race seems so lackluster. Now maybe four years ago because I was up to my gills and about to get my head chopped off, um, maybe it seemed like this was it was more intense. But it just seems like there's no real enthusiasm around this election. Is it? I mean, it's pretty quiet. I think it's pretty quiet. I mean, it's like we got. I feel like people have been so beat down over the last twelve years. Well, it, it seems like, like there's an election every year, to be honest with you. There is an election every year. That way. It is, and then and then you compound the Donald Trump on top of it. Hey, is Donald Trump coming to town? Yeah, yeah with Donald Trump, Trump it feels like, like there's, there's something, something every day. day. Yes, it At is. least every week. And then it's like, then it all runs together. You can't remember which one. You think Donald Trump will be in town for the uh, All-Star game? No. Too many black people? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so what's, what, where's Bloomberg? Bloomberg probably. Let me tell you what Bloomberg. Bloomberg, like, I'm gonna get you. Look, Bloomberg gonna be standing outside the United Center with all the extra tickets. Like, hey, I, I, get, you, I get you Negroes in the basketball games. You can't even get to in your own hometown. <laughs> um, I am gonna tell you all this though. Let me say this as we uh, depart the studio. I gotta take some naps. I gotta go say what's up to my girl Jim Alita. She's got a big event tonight. 
Um, and then don't forget, catch me at Sibs. But Ty, I want to just remind everybody from Chicago and all of the people that are visiting to be safe this weekend. Um, be safe in more than one way. Be safe as you participate in the debaucherous activities that you may be plotting to participate in. You know, I seen a lot of women last night in short black dresses and and all type of stuff. And they was out looking and fishing. And I saw dudes looking like they was walking lamb chops around the whole place. <laughs> and I thought to myself, this is the perfect environment. Um, for something not positive to happen, mm. and so what I, in, in a variety of ways. So make sure that you are checking for chokers. If if the girl has on a choker, be careful, um, fellas. Uh, be careful for just because you met somebody. If it seems that easy, it probably is not. Right. Uh, be careful. Don't don't leave with somebody. Go home and, and wake up without your stuff. Right, men and women, but y'all be safe, but enjoy this weekend because it is we are the center of the universe. Chicago, let's show the world how great it can be. You know, they, if some now, I'm gonna tell you, I don't shoot nobody this weekend because y'all know if they shoot anybody this weekend, it's gonna be international news and we'll be back to Beirut. But I'm gonna tell you, it's been a great week, it's sped by time, but we got so much to talk about. Once we get through All Star, it's time to get back to business. But we're going to have some fun this weekend. So for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Miss Sonia Escobar, she's a musical number of the soul plane. I want to encourage you all to download and watch Illinois Minotti this weekend if you're not watching the All-Star Game. Because Todd, you know Todd, he waiting for my son to come dunk on him. Uh, he might go easy on you, though. Plus, I am, that's my co-host, Todd Stroger. I am the host of the WVOA Morning Show. Every day asking what's in it for the black people. And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May said, we out of here. Peace. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. 16. Yo, little babe. Donna Miller has something coming on next week, and she likes to come on on Monday. Uh, for what? Uh, uh, pull it up for her. Sorry. Oh.